Right, thank you very much, honorable members. One minute. Well, good morning, um, everybody. It's 10 o'clock, so we're going to start. Um, welcome to the Portfolio Committee on Police, um, to the Honourable Members, to the Minister of Police, his delegation, the National Commissioner and the team. I also saw the MEC of the Western Cape for Community Policing. Also, civil society, media, you're very much welcome at this Portfolio Committee meeting. Um, Maybe just a few administrative matters before we proceed with today's briefing. I want to thank all the members of the Portfolio Committee for last week's oversight visit to the Free State. Also, our members working very hard on uh, the public holiday on Thursday. I just want to indicate to members that I've received comprehensive um, responses from the Free State Provincial Commissioner dealing with all the outstanding issues. Um, the content advisor has looked at it, so we'll make that available to members, um, that you can also study those responses um, to make sure that you're okay with, with the relevant feedback. So thank you to the members. And then we come to today's meeting. I think it is um, a quite um, a historic meeting. I think it's the first time that the statistics on crime uh, by SAPS is made available to a portfolio committee at the portfolio committee. And I want to thank the Minister of Police for taking the initiative with that. I think it indicates that the role of Parliament is important in terms of oversight, and that also that the Portfolio Committee can get the first bite at the cherry and reflect on, on the crime statistics. Members will also remember, and we've made copies available, of our interactions last year in October with the police management on the crime stats. We made certain observations, and there was also observations with regard to the AG, so we've just made available to members so that members can peruse that and have a look at that. And the purpose today will to be to get that briefing and then give an ample opportunity to members to interact on the report. Um, I'm first going to ask the members to introduce themselves and then I will give an opportunity to the Minister to make some introductory remarks as well as introduce his delegation. Also welcome to the Acting Secretary of the Civilian um, Police Department, as well as the Acting Director of IPED is also here. So welcome to them as well. Um, we will start here on, the, you, you're welcome to introduce yourself. Good morning, my name is Enji Miliwati, and I'm here to come to you. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pindile Mola, a member of this portfolio committee. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Jerome Mage, a member of this committee. Good morning, colleagues. A.M. Sheikh Imam, member of this committee. Good morning, dames and heren. I'm Peter Grunewald. morning, minister. And I'm a lead of the committee. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, Stan Bonani. I'm Zakele Mbele, member of the committee. And good morning, I'm Diane Kola Barnard. Good morning. Uh, I'm Albert Mungango, member of this committee. Thank you very much. I just must, must indicate we've received two um, apologies. Um, it's from Mr. Leonard Ramatlakane, as well as from Ms. Mabija. So those are the two apologies. Also, a word of welcome to the Deputy Minister of Police, Honorable Suchi. She's also very much welcome, and welcome to participate in the proceedings. So, Minister, um, I'm going to give you now the opportunity. Minister. Uh, 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson, and thank you very much, uh, all members. I was just the, the reflecting that I'm surrounded by, <clears throat> by two women. One is black and one is white. <laughs> and I, I suspect that makes me colored. <laughs> I'm in the middle. <laughs> So I'm, I'm blended to, between the two complexions of sorts. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, 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 Chairperson. The <clears throat> presentation that will be that will be running today <clears throat> is in, generally in two parts. The first part is is what I would present to the portfolio committees as generally an overview of what the <clears throat> the crime states appear to be and what they pro possibly represent and so forth. The, <clears throat> the second part is of course delving into the detail in terms of the actual statistical data and so forth uh, on the side uh, of, the <clears throat> of the National Commissioner. Uh, there are two general, few general points that we want to make is that we, shouldn't rem we should remember that when we deal with the question of crime statistics, essentially we are dealing with the social circumstance of our society and the social circumstance of our country. So it's not just simply about numbers. It's, it's, it's a, you know, actually the numbers, as we capture them, they're also reflective of the state of, the, of society. So it is essentially about who we are and perhaps what we should also firmly resolve to do as South Africans uh, dealing with our own social circumstance. Now, the South African Police Services is responsible for a population of about 54, 54 million, and we have about 1,138 police stations across the country. Our personal strength stands at 194,852 police men and women. Um, and therefore the distribution ratio, uh, population ratio, police uh, versus population, stands at 1 is to 358. Uh, in other words, one police member is to 358 citizens. And the international standard, particularly uh, by the United Nations, is, that is 1 is to 460. Uh, on the question of our statistics, you remember that when we reported uh, on the crime states uh, last year, <coughs> we indicated that uh, Chairperson and all members that we were working with Stats SA to look at the question of uh, our statistics uh, around integrity questions and around authenticity and everything else related to statistics. And you'll also remember that uh, we were saying that we are in the move towards the question of uh, official statistics, uh, moving away from national statistics and so on. So <clears throat> um, we, con we are continuing on that path. And as a result thereof, we, we are now in a memorandum of understanding with the Statistics of Africa, a, <clears throat> and the memorandum which actually, broadly speaking, looks at four critical areas. The one is the provision of technical support to the South African Police Service in its production of policing data. The second point is supporting the South African Police Service in consolidating crime statistical definitions and counting rules to produce data for quality statistics. The second, the third point, sorry, in the MOU is forming a joint working party to implement projects for collaboration in the production of identified data. The fourth broad point covered by the MOU is supporting the South African Police Service by Stats SA to monitor and focus trends in the country's crime statistics. The statistics that we're presenting here uh, before you, honorable members, uh, today have been assessed against have been assessed by the Statistics South Africa against the first point being the method methodology. Hmm, this is English, sorry. Methodological soundness, accuracy, comparability, and coherence, and integrity and timely and timeliness. Now, <clears throat> we 
you would also remember that we are still on the same trend as we, you know, same same approach as we had uh, last year. That we we take a longitudinal, longitudinal view around the question of crime statistics in this country, spanning your ten and five year periods. Now, <clears throat> over the ten year period, we still, as South Africa, experience a, a decrease. In, in the following uh, uh, categories of crime. Uh, conduct crimes uh, over the 10-year period reduced by 17.8%. Uh, Conduct-related crimes over the same period re re reduced or decreased by 15.6%. And other serious crimes, uh, they went down over the 10-year period by 17, by 7.6 percent, and property-related crimes by 2.3 percent. The report that we're presenting here today focuses on 17 community-reported crime, serious crimes and three police-detected crimes. On the 17 community serious crimes, in other words, those are the crimes in which ordinary members of, a, of our population walk into our police stations to file complaints. It stands at about 83%. And around contact crime, which is largely defined or comprised of murder, attempted murder, sexual offenses, assault, assault GPH, and common assault, a robbery aggravating and, robbery and, and common rob robbery a, a within that category a stands at 34.4 percent and of course in the period under review a, we have had a 0 0.9 percent increase a, insofar as a, a, this a, a area of contact crime so which basically tells you that a, in the social outlook of this country, uh, there is a standing feature that is there, and that's the question of contact crime, and dominant in there is the question of murder, attempted murder, and as well as the issues of uh, assault and, and, and so on, which in themselves are reflective of the state of our, of our society. Sorry, Chairperson, uh, Minister. We don't have that document. We have a different document. Uh, is oh, we will arrange. We will arrange that it will be made available. Yeah. No, that's no problem. Okay. Thank you, Secretary. But also to say that that document, Chair, this, this is the one that I'm presenting is an extrapolation of the main document that has been dis distributed. Many are Kronewald, who looks like has joined the FF this morning. Thank you. You didn't hear that, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Um, the other category, of course, is conduct-related crime, um, which also has, which stands at 7%, but has also experienced a 1.9% increase, and that's the area of your asset malicious damage to property, etc. And property-related crime um, has reduced by 0.8%, uh, and currently stands at 30.8%. And that's your house breaking, residential house breaking, other premises, theft of motor vehicles and motorcycles, theft out and from motor vehicles and stock theft and so on. In the category of other serious crime, uh, has experienced a decrease of about 2.2%. Uh, and the overall figure stands at 27.8%. Uh, now, on the question of police detected serious crimes, uh, which in a sense looks at the question of unlawful possession of firearms, ammunition, driving under the influence, drugs and alcohol, unlawful possession of and dealing in drugs, and so on. Uh, we have had an increase in the work of the police, in other words, in the performance of the police of about 16.6% in dealing with this particular, particular category. Now, the overall performance outlook is such that we, as we indicated earlier on, that 83% of our population uh, reported various crimes uh, at uh, uh, service points, in other words, police stations, and that led to uh, and, and, and the charging of about 1.7 million persons. Uh, 
and 4,808 4, of those were arrested by DPCI. Um, and we secured out of this number 1,043 life sentences imposed on 739 suspects. Uh, and 680 life sentences against, on, on, on crimes against the women and children as a result of the work of our FCS unit. 686 police were arrested for various crimes uh, in 2014 and 2015. We also recovered 36,186 reported lost and or robbed vehicles. Uh, as police, we detected crime, that, uh, pol uh, detected the rate, a uh, detection of crime and in and, and pursuit of uh, uh, generally our work, has, as I indicated earlier on, uh, rose by 16.6% in the reporting period, and that resulted in the 350,576 arrests. However, looking into statistics, and I'm happy that the, 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 the crime statistics report has been made available and distributed quite widely, we, 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 we do need to continue to ask ourselves critical questions uh, and engaging with various issues as they are pointed out in the, in the report that uh, we, have, uh, we have distributed. The, the one thing is that we continue to have violence as a feature of our social outlook as a South African society. And, and this is a critical point because this point requires that we essentially need to mobilize <coughs> all necessary structures within our society to begin to tackle the issue of the prevalence of, uh, of violence uh, within our communities. Uh, you will see that in the, there is a graphical presentation for an example of how some of these crimes, they actually graduate from one particular level to, to, to the next. For instance, it will start off uh, by a, a simple thing such as common assault, a slap in the face, but it can also graduate from a slap in the face into something else, uh, <clears throat> but from there it can also increase, uh, you know, uh, to a different level altogether, such as murder and so on. And particularly what I'm talking about, <coughs> women in this country would know what, 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 what actually, what that means, because, you know, it tends to also be there within the families and so forth. Now, and in essence, the issue of contact crimes is a social phenomenon. And it's a matter that needs to be dealt with at a multidisciplinary level across society. Uh, and the point here, a uh, honorable chair, honorable members that we're making, is that for an example, to think that we can resolve the issue of murder uh, in our society, and we think that it's the police that must resolve that, it's, it's effectively just hallucination in a sense, uh, because it's a social problem. It's a problem that has got to be tackled uh, at, at levels of family units, which are basic units of uh, the composition of our society, for an example. Uh, <clears throat> the manner in which we school and culture and groom our children uh, in terms of how to manage interpersonal relations and so forth becomes quite uh, critical and so on. So you require so effective social mobilization around uh, this uh, particular area. Now, particularly because you will see that if you were to conduct a further study around the issue of uh, uh, incidences such as murder, you'll discover that it's, it's an occurrence that, it, yeah, it's, it's actually the type of incidences that uh, okay amongst people who know each other very well. You know, be it relatives, be it friends. Uh, we go to a Shibin for a drinking session. We begin to squabble over whether a, a friend of mine called Mpele, for an example, a, bought sufficient vodka as opposed to what I bought and things like that. The next thing we squabble, takes out a knife, stab him, he dies. You know, things like that. Oh, we squabble over a girlfriend uh, and, and things like that. So you have, uh, you, you, you would have that 
as, as, as a feature of sorts, and therefore that's why I was saying, look, it's a, it's a social problem that has got to be tackled uh, from, <clears throat> from, from, from a societal angle, broadly speaking. The third point that we want to make is that the causal link between the commission of crime and drug and alcohol abuse continues to be standing a feature of dri in driving up levels of crime despite the fact that we confiscated a 1.7 billion liters of alcohol in the year under review. We also closed down a 37,979 unlicensed liquor premises and so forth. So despite that, the fact of the matter is that you have prevalence in our communities of drunk and alcohol abuse and there's the exist causal link between uh, that and the rate of uh, uh, criminal activity uh, within, within communities. Again, you require a, you know, a, a multidisciplinary approach in dealing with just that circumstance alone. And also even the mobilization of state uh, agencies, resources, and different tiers of governance uh, in our society, for instance, to begin to collaborate around the issue of the prevalence of taverns and, and alcohol and, and everything else. Now, <clears throat> What is encouraging, though, is that uh, it, it is quite encouraging to note that the levels of police detection compared to last year is on the increase. Uh, because that then talks to the efforts that mem ordinary members of the police service are putting in their work, for an example, to, to follow through on the uh, on, 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 on the cases, so that's, that's, that's quite uh, encouraging. And of course, uh, it's something that we do need to, 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 to encourage uh, for us, for ourselves to do much more better than where we, we are at. Um, we also note that there has been an increase in social unrest year on, uh, year, on year, which suggests other pressure points and required action. Now, <clears throat> You will see that in the report that we we have present we are presenting in the in the in the in the main report that we are presenting basically, you realise that the the question of of of, of a, you know public a protests has been on 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 the increase and and, and certainly 2014 20. 15 has not been necessarily a, a been an exception a, when it comes to that. But alongside that, it means new pressure points a, around issues of policing, for an example, and methods of policing, generally speaking. But it's, it is also a matter that should not just be seen purely as a policing matter. You know, because what do people protest about? They protest about a, the lack of a, a, a service delivery in certain instances or perceived lack of service delivery in certain cases or they want water, they want roads and so forth and therefore a, <clears throat> embark on these on this types of, a, of, of, of actions. In other words, a solution to that problem is not a, a policy intervention per se. It's a different form of intervention that is required to deal with the ultimate point of satisfying uh, the social the social issues the trends for the past 10 and 5 years have shown a decrease whilst in the year under review there has been an increase in certain categories of crime uh, such as and of course we we, we are giving a, on contact crimes as we said 0.9% an increase contact related crimes stands at 1.9 increase Pop property related crimes uh, stands at a 0.8% decrease uh, other serious uh, crimes, uh, they stand at 2.2% decrease. Um, so, in other, in other words, we still experience a continued sort of overall decrease in crimes um, against the women and children in particular. But also having said so, uh, we, we, we still do say that there is quite a lot that also needs to be done around the issue of sexual offenses in our society. Uh, 
the, the fact that we are experiencing a decrease does not necessarily represent the, 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 the eradication of the scourge of, of rape and violence against women and children, for an example. Uh, but what it means is that statistics are beginning to show, like they showed last year, for an example, a decrease, and there is a further, still a further decrease on there. But still, we have got to deal with the, with the, with the problem of violence against women and children in our society. Uh, on observations, we're making an observation that there are still high levels of violence and aggression in our society, and it, of course, we should all be concerned about this uh, particular uh, tendency. The other point is that the socio-economic inequality also is a contributing factor to levels of crime in this country. The prevalence of firearms, uh, regardless of the fact that in our society, we continue uh, to destroy illegal you know, firearms and everything else in thousands, for that matter. But you still have this particular problem. In certain quarters, you will you remember, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, that at some point, we were all gathered here, and we had a, a, <coughs> we had a summit, I think, uh, with debating the issue of uh, firearm the firearms the amendment the, the bill at some point, but also the question generally of firearm control, firearms control in, the, in, in, in our society and so forth. So the number of concerns that have emerged, for an example, and continue to emerge around the question of firearm management in this country, including, of course, issues that have been raised with the, our central firearms registry, for an example. A, you will see that in the in the in the in the in the presentation that the national commissioner will also be running you will see that we also have the problem of the influx of undocumented uh, immigrants in this country and there are concentrated points uh, around the country for an example and they seem they tend to be a relationship between those points of concentration or those uh, concentrated points uh, with a prevalence of certain types of uh, of uh, of, uh, of crimes uh, around those uh, particular areas we're also seeing the resurgence of uh, tax related violence um, and a, and a thriving market for second, uh, second-hand goods. Now, <clears throat> on the question of, generally speaking, once we would have consumed and inter interacted with the question of the crime statistics, always the logical question to answer is, what is it that needs to be done? Um, now, in this instance, the National Development Plan basically guides us in the type of uh, you know, a, a approach and the route that we'll have to take, amongst other things. But central to what the National Development Plan, Plan states is the question of the creation of partnerships at a societal level to deal with the creation of conditions a, a, of, of safety and security for our, for our communities. And we continue to advocate this particular approach. And I think it's not only just for us, as, as the police or government, uh, broadly speaking, but I think generally for ourselves as a society, I think we need to encourage a, a, you know, this societal mobilization around the question of taking the incidences of crime and the conditions of, uh, and the creation of the conditions of peace and stability in our, uh, in our respective communities. And in, in this regard, we will continue to work and harness efforts and remain committed to building partnerships with business, communi business uh, 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 community as well as the communities, generally speaking, in fighting crime and the eradication of criminality in our society. Uh, and in this instance, uh, Chair, with your permission, I would then ask the, the, the National Commissioner to take us through the the main report insofar as uh, how we have performed in the year under review from a statistical point of view. Uh, 
and then we take it on from there. Thank you very much, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members. Thank you, Minister, for your input. Members, we will, um, after the National Commissioner's input, give opportunity also to pose questions to the Honourable Minister and the Honourable Deputy Minister. Um, National Commissioner, you're welcome to address us. Thanks. Chairperson, Honourable Minister, Honourable Deputy Minister, and uh, the members in the House, Honourable Members in the House, as well as uh, stakeholders attending here today. Thank you for the opportunity for the police to present their statistics for 2014-2015. If I may be allowed, Chairperson, to follow on the footsteps of the Minister in terms of saying, as we announce today, we announce under the release certificate that has been issued by the Statistician General coming out of the Clearance Committee of the States SA. Chair, if I'm allowed, I will then request the Executive Manager of uh, States SA from uh, the National Statist Statistical Division System representing the Statist Statistician General, Mr. Padili Hotler, to read the clearance certificate, if I am allowed. And that's fine. Thank you, Chairperson. Harry. <coughs> Chairperson, Minister, Deputy Minister, National Commissioner, Honourable members and guests, uh, I'll be taking you through the Statistician General's remarks on the 2014-15 crime stats. The Statistician General is required by the Statistics Act number no. 6 of 1999 to coordinate statistical production in the country beyond the confines of Statistics South Africa. In this respect, StatusA has been working with the South African Police Service on improving the quality of crime statistics. The collaboration between these two institutions dates back to 2011, when the South African Police Service, in its quest to improve the quality of policing statistics, established a national crime statistics task team and StatusA is represented in the task team. One of the deliverables of the task team has been a draft policy on crime statistics, which will be finalized and implemented soon. The collaboration between the SAPS and StatusA has culminated in the two organizations entering into a memorandum of understanding in April 2015. The broad areas of collaboration as per this agreement include, amongst others, the provision of technical support to the South African Police Service in its production of policing data, supporting the SAPS in consolidating crime statistical definitions, counting rules to enable the production the production of data for quality statistics. In this regard, Status A and the SAPAs are in the process of forming a joint working, working party to implement projects for collaboration in the production of identified data and supporting the SAPS to monitor and focus trends in the country's crime statistics. As a consequence of the MOU, the Statistician General introduced a clearance process through which the quality of every crime statistics for publication will be ascertained. The Statistician General constituted the clearance committee to evaluate and authenticate the quality of crime statistics in line with the South African Statistical Quality Assessment Framework but using the SASCAR flight. 
The main focus of the assessment was on the processes of compiling the crime statistics using selected indicators within the following SASCAV dimensions, methodological soundness, accuracy, comparability and coherence, integrity, and timeliness. Three other measures have not as yet been tested through the SASCAF, which is relevance, accessibility, and interpretability. The assessment outcome indicated compliance of the SAPS processes with most aspects of the selected SASCAF quality dimension. The challenges identified through the assessment processes were such that the SAPS could affect the necessary improvements without any major difficulty in their next publication. Once the suggested improvements have been implemented, the SAPS data should undergo an independent SASCAF assessment. Given my assessment of the recommendations of the Clearance Committee for this publication, I endorse the 2014-15 Crime Stats publication and encourage its use by stakeholders. I thank you. Thank you for that. National Commissioner, you can go with it. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, let me move to slide one. And again, for purposes of working us through our report, deal with issues of our reporting approach. In that slide one, Chairperson, I want to again indicate that uh, we follow a longitudinal approach in evaluating our statistical performance, a 10-year period, five-year performance, and the in-year performance, therefore talking about the 10-5-1 formation. We also, Chairperson, focus on the broad crime categories and in that regard, Chairperson, we're talking about four major crimes, four major categories, contact crimes, contact-related crime, property-related crime, other serious crime. Within those, Chairperson, we have 17 subcategories upon which we are reporting. Then we also focus, Chairperson, on crimes dependent on police action for detection. Within those chairperson, we have four subcategories that we are reporting upon. I would like to report that in those subcategories, previously we had three. We have, as we report in this crime says chairperson, under sexual offenses, called out those offenses, sexual offenses, that are as a result of, that are dependent on police action, such as prostitution, such as um, pornography, and those type of aspects. So that is why we're having four, so we're reporting on 21 major subcategories. The 17 chairperson, as we go to slide three, uh, community reported serious crimes. This means that these are the crimes where members walk into the station to come and report the crime. Those, as the minister has indicated, accounted for 83.4% of the statistics that we are reporting today. And that relates to 1,795, 947 charges that were reporting up, 1,7 1, 1, million uh, charges that uh, were reporting upon as reflected the apologies for that. The second aspect, Chairperson, relates to four police detected serious crimes. As you can see, we have somebody else there who is at a roadblock, or you go out and search as police. Those are counted, Chairperson, for 16.6%, or in terms of uh, charges, we are talking about 356 1,919 charges that we are reporting upon for this current year. On slide four, Chairperson, we are dealing with the percent, percentage contribution 
compare broad category of the 17 community reported crimes. If we look at those uh, 17 reported community crimes and the four broad categories, contact crimes contrib contributed 34.4% and contact related crimes contributed 7%. If you aggregate those two chairperson, it is very clear that 41.4% uh, of the crimes that we are reporting today come from contact crimes. And as the minister has indicated, those are called acquaintance crimes, those are crimes between members of society, and those are crimes that we arrive as police after the fact. We'll talk a little bit to some of the contributors and drivers of those crimes. Property-related crimes, Chairperson, contributed 30.8%, and subsequently, other serious crimes contributed 27.8% towards the 17 broad categories that we are reporting. As we continue, Chairperson, with the reporting background, we again refer to our constitutional remit, Section 2053 of the Constitution, which defines and gives us the remit in terms of our duty and roles as police. We also, Chairperson, on slide five, touch on outcome three, for which we are also a primary contributor as police, which requires that all people in South Africa are and feel safe. And when we look at how we account for that outcome, Chairperson, firstly, we look at the R part. The R part, we report, we account for that by reporting reduced levels of serious crimes. And for that, we use our crime statistics report, which is what we are doing today. But we also recognize, Chairperson, that uh, you can tell people about numbers. There are issues of perceptions. There are issues of hearts, experiences, and minds of the community in terms of their views about crime. And in this regard, Chairperson, we are developing solid tools. I wish to refer to you, Chairperson, in the House to the concluded citizen-based monitoring mechanism pilot phase by the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation, and it looks successful, and we are looking at working with them to roll it out to nationally. Secondly, Chairperson, we're working with GCIS, where they go to the various departments to check service satisfaction by communities. We package, aided by them, particular questions that are monitored by their tracker survey to check how people are feeling about the services of various departments, us included, so we would have our dedicated and customized tracker tool that is being used to assess how people feel about policing services. The third area chairperson that we are using to deal with the issue of how police perceive our services is the Victims of Crime Survey, which is now established, which is being run by States SA. We highlight some of the findings in the report that we're presenting to you here today, Chairperson. As we continue with the background against which we are reporting this crime statistics, Chairperson, let me deal with issues relating to the methodology we're using to deal with these uh, stats. We use first and foremost, Chairperson, police recorded crime statistics that are derived from administrative data collection processes, starting by re report by recording a doc docket and registering the information on the case administrative system, system. That is the primary, primary basis that we use to start uh, recording and calculating our states. All crimes, Chairperson, are recorded as and when they are brought to their attention or are detected by police, irrespective of when those crimes are committed. Each of the reported crimes are allocated a crime code, which are then aggregated into daily summary of serious crime, the DSSC code. These DSSC codes are used for reporting on crime statistics. The crime, the current uh, reporting 
statistics have been revised over a period of 10 years to exclude unfounded cases. This was uh, also discussed with SA and unfounded cases, if I may give an example, Chairperson, talk to a person walking into our CSC reporting that their stock has been stolen. Two days or three days later, they then realized that uh, the cattle were astray, they were grazing in an isolated area and come back and report they've recovered their cattle, so the case is no more, so the case is unfounded. So the statistics that we're having through a 10-year period excluded these unfounded cases. In terms of the crime counting rules, Chairperson, the source for recording is a docket. But we're not using a docket to count, we're using the charges to count. So one docket may have more than one charge. One docket may contain more charges, as I'm, I've, I've indicated. The statistics provided represent the number of charges and not the number of dockets. In case where multiple offenses are, co are committed within the same scenario, each offense will be recorded in addition to the primary offense. On slide seven, we continue with the crime counting rules. We emphasize, Chairperson, that regardless of the manner in which the, counts, the, the dockets are closed, whether they are withdrawn by the complainant or by the, they are withdrawn by the court, or they are withdrawn as undetected, the recorded crimes will still form part of the crime statistics. We have noted in this regard, Chairperson, some reports last week after uh, the visit by the Portfolio Committee to Free State, about 7,000 dockets, and we want to say those dockets, Chairperson, are under this counting principle, they will remain in our statistics, and we will account on them. The only excluded files here would be the unfounded, and they are well documented and the statistics is sitting in the, record, in the states that we are releasing. For the current reporting uh, period, as indicated already, Chairperson, sexual offenses detected as a result of police action have been reclassified under crimes detected as a result of police action and this is why those increase from three to four. We account for them in the statistics, Chairperson. The issue of crime statistics management policy, the minister has adequately referred to that. To We indicate that uh, we are almost in the final stages of the development of our crime statistics policy, and we are ably aided and supported by State's SA. The memorandum of understanding has been referred to. The current statistics, as we've indicated, have gone a clear, uh, undergone a clearance, and our journey continues, Chairperson, because our view is that crime states are so crucial. We need to graduate them from being a national statistics to what's being an official statistics, such as uh, some of the key indicators, whether it's the GDP and others. So that journey we are working on with crime, uh, with, with States SA, under the statistical quality assessment framework and under the, the respective legislation of States SA to assist us to develop these statistics into that space. We continue internally with our crime quality management to enhance the current quality checks, Chairperson. We're developing quality assurance that uh, will be done on a daily and a monthly basis within the, sta the station, but we will then again aggregate that and ensure that there is, on a quarterly basis, such is done to ensure that our collation of information is reliable and that our comprehensive crime statistics becomes you know the quality that we are desiring to have 
Furthermore, the clearance committee, in accordance with the memorandum of understanding between states SA and SUBS, will assess the quality of our current states each year before the release could take place and issue a release certificate. Chair, on the reporting background, we also want to underscore the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are that indeed there is a need for peaceful surroundings to avoid escalations to unnecessary crime. And these peaceful surroundings are found in our families, are found in our community surroundings, are found in our social institutions, our schools, and many other areas, Chairperson. If there is an effort by society and all of us as members of society to ensure those peaceful surroundings, this escalation and the domino effect that the minister has referred to would greatly reduce. Because a common assault of today is, a, is an assault GBH of tomorrow. An assault GBH of tomorrow is an attempted murder of tomorrow. An attempted murder of, tomorrow, of today is a murder of tomorrow. The escalation continued, and the hands is ours as citizens to ensure that we curtail that type of development and exaggeration of uh, crime. As part of our reporting background chairperson, there are many drivers for crime, but we've identified some of the areas that have been observed as uh, significantly impacting on the crime states that we're reporting. And we also realize that some of these um, drivers chairperson, yes, we do play a role as police, but a significant part of that we are not primarily responsible for, and we need to join hands with those that are primarily responsible for those type of uh, areas to ensure that uh, we again use that partnership or working together as a way of reducing the crimes. We identified taxi violence as one of those drivers, and when we looked into what do we find as part of the drivers of those uh, the crimes that are emanating from the driver chairperson, root disputes, licenses, leadership contestations, issues around BRT, ART, control of new ranks. The municipality would build a new rank and uh, instead of uh, using their bylaws to manage that, they leave it to the hands of uh, taxi associations that start squabbling about who is responsible for that rank, who controls it. Newly developed commercial precincts, inadequate bylaw enforcement by municipalities, and indeed we, f we feel that those type of issues are not areas we are primarily responsible for, but if unattended chairperson, they definitely lead to, to crimes that we then have to manage as police. We also believe that in that area, some work could be done around optimizing the regulatory framework because if it is optimized and there is better regulation, we may find that this type of uh, uh, taxi violence issues are reduced and the crimes that are related to this are also then, you know, positively impacted. We also noted, Chairperson, that drug circulation also contributed quite uh, significantly to some of the crimes that we're managing for this year. And to that we are saying again, you know, there's a drug master plan that has been adopted by government and all of us as various departments have to contribute our own parts towards that drug master, master plan. And we believe that more needs to be done for all of us as various departments and provinces and municipalities to ensure that we coordinate, we contribute optimally our participation in that and that would assist us to reduce a lot. And um, we want to say in the drug space, police offer some assistance, but we would want to argue, Chairperson, that it's non-sustainable, it's reactive, it's at the end of the game. So by the time we come in, a lot has happened, and uh, 
we are downstream and we may arrest, but that may not be the best of what could be offered. The best of what could be offered maybe could be at the school level where we participate with the Department of Education to educate, to tell our children about the dangers of crime so that prevention does take place. So our social crime prevention together with the work that is done by education in terms of uh, the um, skills development for children, we may find a lot happening there. The constant upsurge in confiscation, manufacturing, factories, and imports, we must say, Jefferson, we're finding ourselves no longer just as a transit country. We used to see ourselves as a transit drug country, but now we're both a consumer, we're a manufacturer, we're a consumer, we're a transit state, and the numbers of confiscation of drugs that we have will show exactly that. I want to indicate, Chairperson, that uh, in 2014 alone, 237 South Africans, South Africans were arrested elsewhere in the world as drug mules. And uh, from Interpol, it was reported that 300 drug couriers en route to South Africa were arrested by Interpol. So we are starting to show the impact of uh, you know, the global uh, interaction and those three dimensions to say we're both a consumer, we're a, 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 a we're a, we're a consumer, we're a transit state, we're a manufacturer. You'll see some of the factories that we've closed as we go on. The other driver chairperson that we noted was the proliferation of firearms. Some official af firearms we note that are not accounted for in some of the state institutions, prevalent corruption contributing to crime, firearms across, you know, that comes from across the border, non-integrated accounting systems with the central firearm system and other port of entry related systems of recording firearms, ineffective regulation of spotting firearm licensing, knowing that some of those uh, environments have restricted imports in terms of uh, firearms. So those are areas that we need to be looking into. The temporary firearm permit system to immigrants, you know, we issue some, the ports issue some, so it's, those are areas we need to look into and ensure that uh, we integrate our legislation around this type of issues. Ownership of large volumes of firearms by the private security, we know that that's another area that needs to be looked into, perhaps tightening the regulation or optimizing regulation in that area. No clear picture in terms of baseline against which we confiscate firearms. You'd see the numbers that we are talking about. In the previous year, we confiscated, we, we, we destroyed 14,000 already. This year, we've dis destroyed 9,000. But we don't have the baseline that tells us to say, what baseline are we working against? So it's volumes and volumes of firearms that we are talking about. Other who loopholes, such as uh, firearms experts who are holding, you know, huge, large, large, large amounts of firearm forensic experts analysis, all those uh, unregulated arms caches that they are having because of the special requirements that they are having. Just again, Chairperson, to accentuate the issue of firearms, there are currently 5 million, 5.3 million official firearms obtained in terms of uh, the Firearms Ammunition Act. And uh, if you look at, uh, there are also 4.4 million firearms in terms of uh, the Firearms Control Act. And you're talking a cool 10 million closely of firearms that are circulating in the country. A lot of firearms, Chairperson. These are accounted for by, the, by owners, 2.4 million owners roughly own those firearms chairperson according to the records that we're having. That's a lot of firearms chairperson. These figures include 61,000 naturalized foreigners, foreign nationals who are in possession of 90,000 firearms as indicated in slide 12. Regardless, over the past three financial years chairperson alone, we have issued 296, 315 individual and business firearms uh, licenses. We have destroyed 
108-257 firearms in the past three years alone. And again, I lament the fact that uh, we do not have a baseline to say we're collecting how many illegal firearms, but it's quite a lot that we're also destroying. Over the past three years, um, dedicated hunters, sports shooters, have applied for 95,000 rifles and 22,000 uh, shotguns. And those have not been surrendered, they are still having them. There is no limit to the firearms that may be imported it, into the country, including monitoring the movement of temporary permit holders. So security service providers who close shops do not declare their status. We are mentioning all those chairperson to show you that uh, this whole issue of proliferation of firearms for us is another crucial driver of the crime states that we are reporting today. On slide 13, chairperson, on the reporting background, Around. We are showing in that map the distribution of foreign born population that do not have South African citizenship as per the census of uh, 2011. The red spots shows the concentration of of, 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 of those foreign national and foreign nationals. We show the, 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 the legend there shows that. But if you just look at that map, it tells you a story to start saying, when you look at the statistical performance, the crime state's performance of Limpopo, of Gauteng, of Mpumalanga, and partly the Western Cape, and maybe a little bit some of the areas in KwaZulu Natal, you understand the pressures of policing that we face because over and above the 54 million that the minister spoke about, we then have to also add, factor into that this distribution that you are seeing in this regard. And our we have also noted that it's not only impacting us as police. When we were presenting to, to the cabinet, other ministers, such as health and education, were also acknowledging the fact that there is an impact of this distribution on overall services of, uh, of, 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 of the community. We also show in slide 14, Chairperson, that uh, you know we've used a very limited sample of the subscribe intelligence to track foreign nationals from uh, 13 countries that have contributed to various types of crimes. We, those included the Nigerians, the Zimbabweans, Mozambicans, Somalians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Ethiopian, Basutus, Congolese, Tanzanians, Bulgarians, Malawians, and Chinese nationals. Arrest highlights on some of the foreign nationals involved in criminal, criminal activities. We can indicate that, you know, for instance, DPCI showed that they had arrested something like 486 for serious criminal offenses. If we just take, for instance, an operation such as FIELA, the numbers that we're showing here, the 91 TED, the 60, 682 awaiting trial prior to convictions, the 845 awaiting trial with no prior convictions, these are people that we would normally just have deported. But because of Operation FIELA, we took their fingers and were able to match them with finger, with, with fingerprints because they are undocumented. So it only shows that uh, there are other con drivers that we need to be looking into as we do our crime. On slide 15, Chairperson, we talk about, we work with the FIC to just look at some of uh, the flow of uh, illegal flow of uh, uh, finances. What the FIC report has shown in the previous reporting year is that a total of 10.8 billion was illegally transferred out of the country, which is a lot of money. And uh, 2.1 million, 2.1 billion came into the country from those various whatever, and were, you know, it was classified by some of those uh, countries and all that. So that bothers us, and we are saying inadequate management of the asylum seekers from conflict zone need to be looked into, inadequate man management of internal migration by responsible environments need to be looked into, inadequate management of businesses and other municipal bylaws, because what we have noted is that uh, a lot of the small businesses are illegal, they're trading with a lot of money, 
there is a very strong hawala system for instance in the in the east in the western cape that is taking place money doesn't get that doesn't get to the bank but money that flows in and out of the country so all those issues chairperson have their own uh, contributions granting of bail to foreign nationals who do not have proper ad identification so we are unable to resolve some of the crimes because then they can just leave and leave the crimes that you know the, that that they've committed here the absence of adequate integrated foreign nationals fingerprint database at entry level of ports against which fingerprints lifted at crime scenes could be linked those are some of the weaknesses we've seen i'll skip slide 17 the ministers are ad address that the last driver chairperson that I wish to highlight to this meeting relates to police attacks and murders. If you look at that graph chairperson, the blue area shows you the number of attacks that are dealt with by police. And uh, you can see that they are escalating chairperson. The red areas show you the murders that are arising as a, the fatalities that are arising as a result of those. But to that, I just want to indicate, Chairperson, that if we look at those 157, uh, um, 1,537 attacks that are indicated there, I do want to say, Chairperson, we are mindful of the fact that uh, there is quite a, a significant observation in terms of uh, you know, effective push pushback by police. If indeed we did not have good training and good defense interventions, we would have been seeing more fatalities in terms of uh, the numbers that we have shown there. I also want to link some of these to the reports that uh, IPID gave last year around issues of reduced police brutality. If you look at those uh, numbers and you look at uh, some of the figures that were starting to pick, uh, that's a concern. But losing those numbers of police chairperson is a very serious concern because our investment in terms of training, our investment in terms of experience is huge. So we, we write off a lot in terms of those 86, 77, and 84. But uh, we are working hard, chairperson, to continue to bring that down. In slide 19, chairperson, we show how that uh, or how those attacks play out in terms of provinces and clearly you can see that the western cape is having the most of attacks and we rely quite a lot in terms of um, you know the support that the provincial governments give to policing and work together with police to ensure that the messaging the engagement of communities you know is tackled. We also see KZN there showing quite a strong uh, show in terms of attacks. The red aspects show the fatalities and indeed you can see again Western Cape in the year that we are reporting was high. Houting was a little bit low but Houting seems to be picking up in the current year and Eastern Cape and KZN also showed uh, some significant and concerning numbers in terms of fatalities. Chairperson, I then move on to deal with issues of uh, uh, unrest and peaceful related incidents in terms of community protests. In slide 20, Chairperson, we show that in the in year, clearly there's an increase of, of those incidences. You can see that we have uh, a combined average of uh, close to 14,000 plus uh, and, uh, peaceful and, 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 and uh, violent protests. We've seen a growth from 1907 violent protests to 2,289 violent protests. And I want to indicate, Chairperson, that those two are major contributors to the statistics that we are reporting. Because out of those, you have assault GBH, you have serious damage to properties. So the numbers that we're talking about are also emanating from that. But above all, it's a core business diver diversion platform because we take police and, and put them into this because uh, you know, and then normal policing somehow suffers because we have to manage this uh, uh, public protest. And again, the earlier uh, accession that we made to say, what are the root causes of this? 
So if those service pro protests can be held, dealt with earlier and can be mitigated in time, we will see a reduction and we'll have more police to do normal policing. And in slide 21, Chairperson, we then show how uh, those public order incidences have uh, happened. When we talk about stabilization, we're talking about our intervention and managing to get uh, the situation calm, not that uh, the protests have stabilized. As you can see there, Chairperson, that's the reflection that is coming from the communities in terms of uh, what is happening on, 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 on those areas. On slide 22, Chairperson, we then start talking about um, some of the stats that we picked up from the um, Victims of Crime Survey from Stats SA, where they talk about prevalent crime and crimes most feared by communities. In terms of their research that they have run, they indicate that uh, housebreaking tops the list in terms of crimes that are most feared by society, followed by home robbery, street robbery, pickpocketing and or back snatching, assault, sexual assault, murder, and business robbery. And if you look at those chairperson, most of them, if we were to count them, are sitting more in the 17 crimes that we've indicated. And there's a quite a, a, a significant show of the contact crimes there. On slide 23, we also uplifted from their study access to policing. They are saying 66% of citizens you know, take less than 30 minutes to get to the nearest station. 27% take a, almost an hour and probably an hour plus. 6% close to two hours and 1% need definitely more than two hours. So it's an area that uh, we're using to look at uh, the you know, uh, the mapping of our police stations and how we need to deal with going on. On slide 24, Chairperson, the overall satisfaction levels that were noted by States SA in the previous year, victims of crime, so we police the percentage of household who, were, who indicated that they were satisfied with police in their area were 59% in the previous year to a 60%. We noted chairperson, we appreciate the feedback, we believe that there's still more work to be done to ensure that we increase those levels of satisfaction. On slide 25, chairperson, they then show the areas that informs that satisfaction. And the uh, top of that is that police do come to the crime scene to come and uh, police and collect statements and do those type of things. The community indicate that police are committed. They talk about police are, are, are arresting criminals. There is a sense of trustworthiness. Time we need to also note and respond on and improve, recover stolen property and others. So those are the, the figures that we lifted from the Victims of Crime Survey. On slide 26, Chairperson, I then get into the actual uh, crime statistics that were presenting before you. And we start by presenting the overall longitudinal highlights on all those broad categories that uh, we have indicated. The minister has also touched on those contact crimes. You see now the 10, the 5, and the 1. And if you look at that, the decrease in terms of contact crime continued, you know, 17.9 over 10 years. For the five years, we recorded at 2.6. In the current in year, we've seen a slight increase of 0.9% or read otherwise 5,384 more counts were reported this year than the previous year. In terms of contact related crimes, for 10 years, we, you know, the 10 year view still shows a 15.6% decrease, the five years a 2.1%. And then for the current year, we see a slight increase of 1.9% or read differently, 
2,291 more reported counts on contact-related crimes. And again, that again shows that that area remains very stubborn and requires our undivided and even more focused attention beyond policing, but ensuring that we focus on some of the issues that the ministers mentioned to say those are social related aspects that requires that uh, we intervene creatively and innovatively and see how we can deal with that stubborn area. Property related crimes chairperson as an area decreased by 2.3 percent over 10 years. In five years it, it increased by 4.6 percent. In the current year chairperson we have a decrease of 0.8 percent or read otherwise we have 390 3,980,000 3, less reported counts than we had in the previous year. Regarding other serious crimes, Chairperson, in 10 years we have an 8.1% decrease, in 5 years 5.3%, and in the current year again, Chairperson, we have a decrease of 2.2% or read otherwise we had 11,491 less reported counts than we did the other year. Just to highlight some of the key operational successes, the Minister has touched on those. It is important to report that in the year that we are reporting, the police arrested 1.7 million persons through crime prevention related activities. And we break it down to say a million was for serious crimes, 491,548 for less serious crimes, and 141,397 for, for other crimes. In, in addition to those arrests, we report, Chairperson, that 4,808 were arrested by our unit DPCI. Um, the life sentences the minister has indicated, the life sentences that were secured, and uh, also the fact that uh, we, you know, 708, 780 of those life sentences were for crimes against women and children. Once we celebrate and uh, recognize that, we still believe that's an area that continues to require our attention as the police. Police criminality is yet another driver chairperson, so we're not letting our foot off the pedal in terms of that one. We actively track that chairperson, and we thank also IPIT for working with us in this area. As police, we have arrested 686 police for various types of crimes that were committed by the police. We've recovered vehicles, three 36,186 that were reported as lost. On slide 28, we show the drugs that we have uh, confiscated. And uh, there are many chairperson, but perhaps one just to, you know, to highlight that if you look at cannabis and you look at wonga and you look at nyaupe, you start realizing that uh, the local use of drugs is growing and it is a little bit more complex area to police. And that's an area that requires more crime prevention, participation of the churches, participation of the schools, so that we can educate the young users of these drugs to actually self-control and not get involved. We, 57 clandestine drug laboratories were dismantled of which 31 were hydroponic laboratories, 26 were other synthetic chemical laboratories. We closed 37,900 unlicensed illegal liquor premises. But Chair, I want to underscore the fact that we confiscated 1.5 billion liters of liquor. Not that was consumed, but that which we conf confiscated. So if you start thinking of what was consumed and what does that does to our crime states, it's mind boggling. Chairperson, let me move on to the 17 community reported serious crimes. 
On slide 30, Chairperson, again, as the Minister has indicated, we show that uh, um, the 17 community uh, reported crimes continue to decline over the 10-year period from a high of uh, 2 million charges in 2005 and 6 to 1.7 million charges, a 10.6% change over the 10-year period. In the current reporting period, Chairperson, the seven community reported serious crimes decreased by 0.4%. This follows another 0.4% decrease that we had in the previous financial year. So we are grateful, Chair, that uh, overall the trend is still going down. On slide 31, Chairperson, what we then try to deal with is to deal with the broad categories and to show how they've performed. The solid red and the solid green are for the previous year, the striped red and the striped green are for the current year for purposes of working with me. Where you see those uh, dotted circles were showing where we have had an upward trend. When looking at the four broad categories, making up the 17 community reported crimes, it is evident that contact and contact related crimes continue to be stubborn chairperson. With contact crimes increasing from 0.5 percent change when comparing to 2012-13 to 2013-14, the broad category increased to 0.9 percent. A similar trend is being observed, Chairperson, when we talk about contact-related crimes, as is indicated on that slide. However, the increasing trend, uh, we can see that uh, there is a decrease in terms of property-related crimes as well as other serious crimes. These categories continued, Chairperson, to decrease over the comparison period from a zero percentage change to a negative 0.8% uh, as you've seen, Chairperson, the property related crimes. I then move Chairperson to, to the issue relating to the contact crimes, as I've said, Chairperson. Maybe let me close off by saying uh, they jointly contribute 41.4% of the charges that we are having. And it's a serious observation, Chairperson, and a support of what the Minister has said, to say it is necessary to look at the nature of a violent society that we are policing. I then move, Chairperson, to the contact crimes. Overall, in terms of contact crimes, Chairperson, um, Contact crimes decreased over 10 years by 17.8% from a high of 750,397 charges to the current 616,973 charges, followed by a 2.6% decrease over the five year period. However, in the current year, Chairperson, contact crimes have increased by 0.9%. In slide 34, Chairperson, we then now look at the various aspects of the contact crimes. First, we look at murder. Murder decreased from 5.0 between 2012 and 13, and 2013 and 14 to a 4.6% change between in, in 14 and 15. The total sexual offenses continued their decline. Attempted murder, Chairperson, um, decreased from 4.6% to 3.2% change in 14 and 15. Assault GBH, on the other hand, whereas it was down 1.5%, it has increased by 0.1% in 14 and 15. 
Common assault continued to decline chairperson as indicated on the board there by 2.8%. Common robbery increased from 0.6% in the previous financial year. In 14-15, it grew to 2.7. Robbery aggravating had a toll increase the previous year of 12.8%. It has come down 8%. On slide 35, we show how the provinces have uh, performed. Four of the nine prov provinces recorded decreases in contact crimes in 1415, and these were Free State, Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, and Northern Cape. The remaining five provinces did not have uh, a positive uh, performance in that space. The National Commissioner, Free State is the best performer of the it, nine provinces. Yes. Deputy Minister, well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chairperson, the overview on um, this um, contact crimes, uh, maybe I should just share some of this. It is notable that in particular, these contact crimes are concentrated in some areas of the provinces with about 30 prisons in Gauteng, recording something like 44.4% of all contact crimes in the period under review. It was further noted that the cases were not only concentrated in certain prisons, but then often also in specific areas within the prisons. You know, areas such as Soweto, Hilbro, Haniju, Tembiza, Mamilodi East, those are some of the prisons in Gauteng when we did the analysis that we were looking into. And uh, these contact times, Chairperson, tend to occur as we were analyzing frequently over weekends and mostly during dark hours when people tend to socialize or to be on their way from their social activities, which also includes consumption of alcohol or even drugs. A seasonal spark is also usually evident over the peak holiday periods or during the festive season. And a case in point is the analysis we made in KZN. During the present reporting period, uh, we found that about 61% of the murders occurred over weekends and 40% between you know, 6 p.m. and 12 p.m. And it is also disturbing to know that, uh, you know, on average, you know, they record something like um, 11 murders per day. But 55 murders were recorded on Christmas Day, and 54 murders were recorded on New Year's Day in KZN. So it shows also that uh, seasonal spike and peak, and to start saying some of those things are happening. Every large, a very large proportion of the contact crimes involved victims and perpetrators that are known to one another and are frequently linked to arguments among such people. The perpetrators in most cases are young males, mainly in their 20s and 30s. Unemployment, acquaintance crimes seem to be very strong in, in, in that area, Chairperson. So those are some of the issues that uh, our analysis, you know, sort of uh, reflect in terms of that. And some of the cases are related to domestic violence. The deputy minister raised this morning to say it's one of the areas that we need to be looking into and maybe tracking to see how many we're talking about. And uh, a lot, Chairperson, happen in the privacy of homes where there isn't direct policing. So it's a very, very difficult area. We've mentioned issues that further contribute, transport-related conflicts. Um, you know, in KwaZulu-Natal, for instance, in 2014-15, there were 17 confrontations which were ongoing, involve, evolve, in, involving 29 different taxi associations. And out of those, 86 people were killed in the 14-15 
uh, financial year that you are reporting on. So we show some of those drivers to say they are quite difficult for us to look into. We look at gangsterism. Um, it is in a number of provinces, but nowhere more than the traditional heartland of this phenomenon, which is the Western Cape, where 38.8% of the murders recorded in Fuleni precinct during the financial year under review could be linked to gangs. So those are some of the analysis that we're picking up as we go on on this one. And I think um, of great concern for us is uh, the innocent bystanders that were killed and wounded by gangsters in this province. It is apparently also, it's increasing in the Western Cape, and it accounted for something like 28.5% of the murders and attempted, you know, and attempted uh, murders and victims. In the, in the province. So those are issues that, uh, you know, the analysis that we get from the provinces. We also talk about uh, vigilantism, which also talks to, you know, to, to because crowds are frequently involved as perpetrators, it is difficult for us to also uh, arrest some of those perpetrators. They are in crowds, they are uncooperatives. They do that under the pretext of crime prevention. But we would like to argue that there is lawlessness and there is no respect for the law. And those are some of the issues that we need to look into. We, we mentioned other contributors such as illegal mining, the Zamazamas in, 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 in Gauteng are really contributing a lot towards uh, the matters that are being managed in Gauteng. And um, when we looked at another disturbing uh, trend line that came out of Gauteng chairperson when we deal with issues of murder, for instance, the analysis in Gauteng uh, provincial office, it was discovered that children aged between 10 and 17 years committed 49 murders. And uh, Youth suspect arrested aged between 18 and 35 committed 884 murders, 24% of the total uh, murders in that provincial year. So I was just touching on those chairperson to show some of the challenges that uh, we're having there. On slide 38, chairperson, we deal with uh, contact related crimes, arson continued to go down, the malicious. Uh, uh, damage, police call it injury to property, uh, showed an increase of 2.3%. And in terms of contact related crimes, those slide 39 shows how the provinces have performed chairperson. And indeed, when we look at that, um, contact related crimes increased in six provinces and uh, only nine. Only three had a decrease, Chairperson, as indicated there. The property-related crimes, Chairperson, we go to slide 41. The comparison of the incidence of property-related crimes shows a decrease of 2.3% over the past 10 years and uh, a further increase over the past five years, in the current financial year, Chairperson, we show a decrease of 0.8%. And um, on slide 42, we now show the subcategories of property-related crimes, Chairperson. Beglary at non-residential premises increased from, uh, it was almost zero last year and uh, it has increased to a 1.2 percentage change in 14-15. Bedlary residential, we've seen a decrease, a continued decrease in that area of 2.3 percent per person. Theft of motor vehicles and motorcycles, it continued to decrease and we, see, we saw a 2.7 percent decrease in that area. Theft out of motor vehicle, we see it was in the previous year 3.5, and then we see an, a, a percent positive, we see a decrease in that positive to 1.1 percent chair person. Shop stock theft has gone up, it, was, it had done well the previous year, it has gone up to 
1.8%. Uh, and uh, in that regard, we are again working very closely with um, the Consumer Goods Council and others to ensure that uh, we again tame that. And it can be linked to issues of unemployment where people are desperate to get other things you know, to be involved in those type of crimes. In slide 43, Chairperson, we then show how the provinces performed in terms of property-related crimes, and um, indeed increase recorded in six of the provinces, and only three provinces, Gauteng, KwaZulu Natal, uh, Free State, Western Cape, and, and Gauteng, four of them, show a decrease, Chairperson. Slide 45, we then, slide 45, we then deal with uh, ser other serious crimes. We again continue to see a, de a, 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 a continued decline in that area, Chairperson, overall, a 2.2% decrease for the reporting period. And uh, in slide 47, we then look at uh, the subcategories in that area. Other theft, chairperson, has um, decreased, as we can see there. And um, commercial crimes continue on their decline, chairperson, as well as uh, shoplifting showing some increase there, chairperson. Um, slide 47, only three provinces recorded increases in terms of other serious crimes. The others have managed to record overall decreases. On slide 49, Chairperson, we then deal with uh, crimes detected as a result of police action. Those, Chairperson, should increase, not decrease. So overall, we see the increase in trend continuing. We see an increase overall of 1.9%. On slide 50, we then dismember and show the various uh, performance of the subcategories. Illegal possession of firearms, uh, we believe that more should still be done given the problems that we have raised. It is down by 1.6. It's not the direction it should take. It should take a, you know, a, a direction that is looking up and is green. Um, the drug-related crimes, whereas we still have a, a, an, an increase there, we believe that that increase has to be grown. And, but, as, but as I've said, the increase of those wongas and the dachas and the nyaupes Need to be, we need to find innovative strategies to get into that space. Chairperson, driving under the influence of alcohol, we are not sure whether uh, there is a better response to the awareness campaigns of the Department of Transport as well as our crime prevention. We seem not to be ad arresting more of the alcohol users who are still using their cars. Sexual offenses detected by police action also showed an increase, which is a direction that we're looking for. On slide 51, Chairperson, we show that uh, all others have increases bar for Gauteng. So I think uh, they would need to pick up their socks because that's where the center of all these things are happening. In conclusion, Chairperson, if we look at slide 53 and look at uh, the aggregate performance of the provinces, the top performing provinces are Free State, Eastern Cape, and KwaZulu Natal, with Free State leading. And we're saying the average performance there is anything between 60 and 80 percent of performance if we take everything into account. The medium performing at uh, the provinces were Northern Cape, Northwest, Mpumalanga, and Gauteng, and that's an aggregate of 40% to 60% performance overall. And uh, the low performing the, uh, provinces were Western Cape and Limpopo, and that is 40% and below. So if we take the aggregate performance that we've been sharing, this is how we would classify the provinces and uh, Free State would be leading in this area. 
our concluding, uh, the national chairperson would also be a medium performer when we aggregate all those to look at uh, how does it work out in terms of uh, national. So chairperson, <laughs> to conclude, contact crimes remain stubborn in this financial year. It should be noted that contact crime are policed after the fact, and we require partnerships and participation of the community in terms of that. Furthermore, Chairperson, reflecting on an increase in the degree of violence in our communities, particularly with reference to violent protests indicated earlier, it is evident that there is a broad normalization of violence in our communities. And quantity of media coverage on crime may have a direct influence or breed further perpetration of some of the crimes because you have copycats and others. Peer pressures amongst the youth is also a driver of these crimes. Municipalities, chairperson, are a critical role player in supporting policing efforts. In general, and in particular with regards to matters relating to contact crimes, it is necessary that municipalities and provinces standardize areas such as the Liquor Act, because it will assist us in terms of uh, standardization of liquor trading. It will help us also to look into consumptions of and, uh, which are other significant drivers of crime. Enforcement of bylaws, traffic laws, second-hand goods act, and any other related laws is an important factor to be focused upon by municipalities. We argue, Chairperson, that moral regeneration programs are crucial. There is a noticeable void in the role played by traditional custodians of the moral fiber of society, such as the home, the family, the church, the schools, various other social formations, the CBOs, the NGOs, we believe that they have a very crucial role in adding to the journey of fighting crime in the country. The proliferation of firearms continues to be a notable driver of criminality. Multi-pronged interventions by police results in substantial collection and destruction of thousands of illegal firearms. However, the availability and supply remains incessant. Part of the solution lies in the revisitation and strengthening of the Firearms Control Act, a process which has been commenced by the Ministry of Police Chairperson. Tightening border management is yet another observed area of focus in the effort of managing crime. A cursory analysis of the SAP's business intelligence um, reflects some increase in the crimes committed by some of uh, the um, undocumented from foreign nationals. And controlled migration is necessary to assist in curbing crime. Criminality corruption and other unethical practices by law enforcement agencies contribute towards driving up crime. A dedicated focus by the employers' oversight agencies such as IPIT, the Inspector General, the Civilian Secretariat, and others should, through their interventions, contribute towards regression of such negative conduct and behavior to positively contribute towards crime reduction. We too, as the administration, will ensure that we support their effort through very strong, enhanced internal disciplinary processes and enforcement of the code of conduct that we all sign as the police. All levels of government to ensure that there is early intervention to mitigate issues relating to service delivery and other community related grievances. This should be attended to before they escalate to violent protests that result in opportunistic criminality. Policing this area results in significant core business diversion requiring that SAPs redirect policing resources to the protests due to sustained intense prolonged nature of this. Collaboration with the Southern African Regional Police Chiefs, Cooperation, SARCO, the Interpol, the AFRIPOL, is quite crucial to deal with transnational crime. Environmental crimes are also given attention, our support 
for the departments that are ensuring that uh, our environment is protected remains focused. The brazen nature of criminals in our society results in significant numbers of police murders. This not only impacts SAP's establishment, but also a loss of investment in terms of skills and experience. Crimes against women and children, chairperson, remain a priority for government and for the SAPs. In this regard, I can safely say we have a good story to tell as various efforts that we make towards reducing these crimes are beginning to pay dividends. In this regard, I can highlight the continued decrease in the overall crimes against children as the total number of reported charges further decreased by 51.3%. 31% when compared to 2013-14. Let me mention a few subsets of these crimes. Meta decreased by 47.86% in relation to this. Total sexual of of offenses decreased by 52.62% in relation to this. Assault GBH decreased by 50.14% and common assault by 50.05%. But chairperson, this is never something that we are going to to, to remove our pedal, our foot from the pedal, the accelerator continues chairperson. It's a crucial area. The overall conviction rate of these crimes has possibly increased by 0.9% from 75.1% to 76.1% in the 14-15 financial year. We've also realized a 51.2% decrease in the overall crimes against women during this period. Worth mentioning are the following. Murder reflected a re decrease of 53.8%. Total sexual offenses reflected a decrease of 52.6%. And common assault, a decrease of 51.3%. The overall conviction rate, welcome, a welcomed increase increased by uh, 0 0.2 from 82.5 percent in 13-14 to 82.7 in 14-15, uh, with total sexual offenses reflecting the highest increase of 4.8 uh, percent. When all is said and done, Chairperson, crime statistics, as the, 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 the minister mentioned, really, are something that uh, requires all of us as a society to work on. And indeed, we remain committed. Our hands are on deck as police. We continue to work hard. The challenges are there, Chairperson. And uh, through the support of everyone and the feedback, critical and uh, otherwise, we shall continue to work hard. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, National Commissioner. Thank you for the presentation. Honourable Members, there is um, tea available outside, but we're not going to break for tea. We're going to go to questions immediately. So members are welcome uh, during the process to get some tea or whatever refreshments, but we're going to continue. Uh, I'll do the first two questions, then we go to Honourable Mulabatsi. Two questions per member, and we'll also have a second round, yes. Um, my first question is to the Honourable Minister. Minister, we've seen a slightly increase in the issue of serious crimes as well as contact crimes. Now, um, I think looking at SAPs, and I think you gave a very good presentation on the turnaround strategy in this committee. Um, you, for instance, also indicated that there would be, um, by the task team that's going to be led by the Deputy Minister, also organizational structure review, also looking at um, leadership review and assessment process, but also looking at the priorities in terms of the geographical area, the consequently differentiating SAPS action and the resources deployment. The question is, right, we've got now the figures for that financial year. We know those provinces who are not really dealing effectively um, with, the, with the crime tendencies. Can we expect from that task team to look in the medium to short term to the immediate shifting of resources to those areas where there are currently um, a continuum of crime tendencies, especially with regard to contact crime, as well as the issue of um, serious crime. So in terms of the relocation of units, deployment of resources, are we going to make an effort in terms of the work of the task team to deal with that? 
The second issue is also the realignment of SAPs internally. Just to give you an example, one of the issues raised by the National Commission in the presentation is the question of firearms. Now, in our visit last week to the Free State, it was reported to us that the Free State CFR section dwindled from 47 to 12 members during the last five years. And the members indicated they're not able to deal with the issues at hand. They don't, don't got the hands. So the question is as well is the task team that's going to be led by the Deputy Minister. Are they also going to look at those deficiencies? Because if there's not enough people to deal with the issues of the CFR as indicated by the, by the National Commission, we're not going to turn around the strategy in the, with um, illegal firearms. So if we can get a response to that. Honorable Molabatsi. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Let me also thank the release of the crime stats. My question is on, my first question is on the, there is an outcry out there about the reliability of the stats. My direct question is therefore, is the methodology used yielding the envisaged result? My second question is, the, you spoke of the involvement of States SA, which is appreciated. But my question is, are we going to see in future a, a situation where there will be an institution that independently does crime stats? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Minister, thank you for the statistics. My Just the mic, Honorable, that we can't hear you. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Mula. My two questions are How will the states be quality controlled if State SA does not have the responsibility for releasing the states? What efforts are made to ensure that SAPS members capture the crime correctly at the station level on the case system? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mambula. Honorable Marke. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my first question would be overall, seemingly Limpopo. Uh, Every type of crime is increasing in Limpopo, <laughs> according to the states. What, what, what might be uh, uh, the problem? The only thing that uh, seems to be going the right direction is crime detected as a result of police action. It has increased more than double any other province. So, so just to try and understand what, 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 what actually is happening in Limpopo, is it because of the influx that we see? Because the whole of Limpopo is now red, it's only red dots all over Limpopo. If we could uh, get a reason for that. And uh, uh, police attacks. Uh, just to try and understand or what is the trend? Is it, is it a coincidence where police get uh, the criminals uh, red-handed or is it a, a direct attack on the police because there seems to be some trend of a direct attack on police? And if, it, if that is the case, what, what would be the reason? Surely it can, it can be because they want police firearms or there must be some, some other reason more than that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mark. Honorable Mamiki Sheikh. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, uh, Minister, let me first of all thank you for this. Uh, the first time, I think, the release of this crime stat, so it's something to actually be proud of. Uh, however, I'm not really satisfied, I must be honest with you. 
Everything that we've heard today for me is what we always hear. We know there are drug problems in the area. We know there's alcohol problems in the area. We know there's police officers that are corrupt. But we hear this year in and year out, year in and year out. And I think what I want to hear today, what drastic measures and steps are we going to take to be able to combat and fight this? We know the challenges. You speak about firearms, you speak about drugs, you speak about trafficking, you speak about foreign. All these things are common. We know about it every day. Tell us what exactly are we going to do to combat this? What mechanisms have you got in place to work with all the other relevant departments, social development, whether it's uh, international relations, home affairs, uh, whatever it is? Uh, uh, what are you putting a big plan? In my view, it would appear it's frightening. I, I must be honest to you. If you read paperwork, it says something. In reality, there's something else. I want to know what are we going to do? Is there a need for maybe a boss barad? Get all the people together, the different relevant departments, and let's brainstorm to find solutions. Otherwise, I think we, we, we say we're going to face a very, very serious challenge. That's the first thing. Um, with regards to the police killings, and, and I have to come back on it, uh, yes, uh, Commissioner, when you say that it affects the police, uh, it affects the environment, but I want you to know that when one police officer dies, it affects the entire community, but more so it affects hundreds of other police officers psychologically. Because police officers do not believe that they are being protected by government, they, by the SEPs itself, they don't believe they have enough benefits, and I'll give you an example. How is a guy going to be motivated as a police officer when he gets 400 rand to put his entire life a month at risk? 400 rand danger allowance. We know police officers are dying by being shot to the head and the neck. All we're giving them is bulletproof vest, which more often than not is not even checked. So I want to know what exactly are we going to do to protect our police officers? They are targets. A criminal must be treated with the, with, with the contempt he or she deserves. What we are doing, we are cushioning the criminals at the expense of our police officers. So if we want police officers to come out and really fight crime, then we need to take good care of them. One of the reasons they go out and become corrupt is because of the benefits that they get, because of the conditions that they work on. So I think overall there is so much for us to sit really and talk about and find solutions and engage with all these police officers so that we could find solutions and try and, and, and hopefully succeed in our battle against crime. I'll stop the chair. Honorable Grunewald. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, let me first start with a good story. I want to congratulate the minister and maybe yourself. Um, I know yesterday was a super moon, so it was a super action for the first time in my 26 years as a member of parliament that we received the statistics with the Portfolio Committee of Police. And I want to congratulate the minister and the chairperson uh, for that action. But unfortunately, chairperson, I must also say that the supermoon is also called the bloody moon. So uh, let me get to the real facts. Firstly, chairperson, I want to say that I doubt the statistics. And I will say why. Firstly, if you look at slide number five of the Commissioner's report on the methodology, it says all crimes are recorded as and and when they are brought to the attention or detected by police. Now I want to clearly say to you that is not true. I receive numerous complaints of members of the public who lay charges at the police station, but if they follow it up, they just disappear. They don't even get a case number. So that is the first thing. And I can give a personal experience here, person. I had a break-in or a burglary in my house in Acacia Park. To make a long story short, in the end, when I asked the investigating officer what crime has been committed, it was documented as damage to state property. And that is what is happening in practice when it comes to the reporting of crime 
and if we want to talk about statistics. So I do not agree and think that even if Stat South Africa is brought into the auditing system of verifying the statistics, that this is a true reflection of what is going on in South Africa. It sounds very good if you look at the broad categories. I mean, contact crime, only an increase of 0.9%. Uh, contact related, only an increase of 1.9%. But if you look at the more detailed chairperson, we have a big problem. For instance, if we look at aggravated robbery, for the last two years we had an increase of 21.3%. Last year, it was an increase of 8.5%. That's robbery aggravated. Murder, an increase of 9.6% over the last two years. This year, an increase of 4.6%. And then, when it comes to robbery at the residential properties, there's no statistics. My question is why? It has always been a category that we have robberies at residential areas or property because that is one of the most fear, feared crimes of people in South Africa. Why don't we have it in the statistics? Lastly, I want to say, Chairperson, we must not mislead ourselves by thinking that if we have small increases per category, big categories, that crime in South Africa is under control. I'm sorry to say, Honorable Minister, and to the Commissioner, when I look at this, if you look more in detail, crime in South Africa is not under control. Really, an increase of 9.6% over two years in murder alone. I've worked it out in figures. That means that last year, we had uh, 17,853 murders in South Africa. 17,835 or 53? That we cannot continue with this. So my two questions, Chairperson, why don't we have uh, a robbery at um, residential areas, uh, a, a property? And secondly, the verification of the statistics. Can I get an answer on that? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Grunewald. Honorable Mbele. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Um, for this round, in terms of my two questions, my first question, well, firstly, let me just start by saying that in terms of my first question, it's, it is gratifying to see the ongoing trend in um, reduction of sexual offense uh, related uh, crime. Um, I think that's certainly um, a good development. Um, and looking at slide 34, um, as well as the, the highlights that the the National Commissioner mentioned from slide 59 going on to slide 60, just the improvements in conviction rates and um, um, as well as just the, the overall uh, decrease in the, in the, in, in the incidences that's, that speaks to that. So my, my question in that regard is what is this reduction trend in uh, these crime categories attributed two in the analysis of the SEPs. Um, is it related, for example, to the reintroduction of the FCS units, which is what I would advance, um, in which case would the National Commissioner uh, and the Minister agree that this demonstrates a certain efficacy to having a specialized units approach um, in, in tackling um, crime categories that require a, a focused investigative uh, component. Uh, my second question is related to the, the, the National Commissioner had indicated a trend um, about increasing gang-related activity in uh, 
Maspumelele, for example, in the Western Cape. Um, and then last week, while the committee was on uh, its oversight visit in the free states, uh, we saw flare-ups happening in that province uh, that were related to gang activity and, and the community backlash to that. Um, and yet, over the past couple of years, there's been a, 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 an immovable resistance, it seems, um, in the SAPs, as well as the, the police ministry, to the idea of, of anti-gang units. Uh, so linked to my previous question, um, I have to ask, given at least indications from the FCS environment about the efficacy of a specialized unit approach. Uh, why is this seemingly not transferring to the anti-gang and anti-drug anti -drug, uh, environments? Why aren't the SAP seemingly willing to try all avenues, um, including this one, um, as opposed to the current approach, which seems to be just focused on convening task teams, which of course have their, uh, their impacts, uh, but as soon as those might get disbanded, you lose that institutional memory and that experience uh, that those officers would have, would have gained. So why, why are we not open to all avenues, including that specialized unit approach, in order to address these emerging trends around gang activity um, in Maspumelele, the long-standing ones on the Cape Flats, uh, the Free State was last week's example. Um, just an explanation of what seems to be a, uh, a blind spot and a resistance to uh, exploring all uh, modus operandi to, to tackle the issue. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Colonel Bernard. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, during our committee oversight visit to the Free State a week ago, uh, my discussions with the detectives and others revealed eventually that 7,000 dockets were simply closed and archived uh, during the previous month. Now, that came about because the detectives apparently had over 400 dockets apiece on their desks. So instead of bringing in more detectives, the decision was taken that national and provincial crews would be sent in to simply close the dockets. Now, uh, all of those victims believe the police are now searching day and night for their rapist or who murdered their loved one or who robbed their house. Um, uh, why was this decision taken? Um, is it being done in every province? Has it been going on for years? Uh, the first time we've actually heard about this happening. Um, and who's behind this idea? Because, of course, the question is, are those dockets that have been shut now removed um, from the crime statistics? Uh, are they closing 7,000 each month? Are they, is it happening all over the country? What is the situation in relation to simply saying, we'll never catch this person, shut the docket, put it in an archive and never look at it again? So that was a huge issue um, raised last week. Secondly, um, of the 27 top crimes reflected on your website right now, as they were quite bizarrely for some time yesterday, um, everyone was looking at them, um, 16 have increased, 11 decreased, but of course most worrying is the murder statistic. Up for the third consecutive year, uh, 49 murders a day. We're basically back, if you look along the loop, to where we were in 2000. So 15 years and billions of rands later, we're back there. Um, and yet revelations from the Gauteng state mortuaries are, are that the count last year according to their body count of murder victims, was their count was a thousand higher than that that was released by the SAPs. Added to that, apparently babies who are born um, and unwanted and are dumped in the bush or dumped down pit latrines to die and that subsequently die, it's not a murder docket, it's an inquest. So they're not counted as murder victims. They're not given an actual file to investigate a murder. No one's held accountable for killing the baby. Um, so there were also over a thousand of those in Gauteng. So for the first time ever, I'm finding I'm questioning the, the murder figures as given, as horrific as they are. Um, frankly, this, this number, uh, it, it's 
17,805 is a number I would expect from a country at war. Um, and please answer those and speak also to the sexual offences. It's wonderful that it's down by 5.4%, but I fear this may reflect the increased distrust in the SAPs by our citizens and the fact that the NGOs say that one in 10 that's a conservative figure. Others say it's as much as one in 20. Only one in 20 women who are raped actually go and report that to the police. So our figure may not be 53,000. It may actually be 535,000 rapes a year, according to the NGOs. Now, what research is being done? The Secretariat, are they doing, are they looking into these matters? Um, and when can we see some results? Because somebody has got to answer to these questions. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Kwanku. Thank you so uh, very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also want to take the cue from those who congratulated the department for the, uh, this crime statistics. Um, well done. We may have our own opinions about what is in there, but at least there is a document in front of us that says something about crime in South Africa. Having said that, <clears throat> I just want to address myself on the issue of violent unrest, uh, because they seem to be actually, you know, uh, a spillover of crime in other categories of crime. It influenced the trends in other categories of crime. Uh, I just want to know whether there is any specific um, multi-departmental kind of strategic approach to deal with this because uh, essentially these violent unrest are actually started by communities um, because they have grievances on issues related to service delivery. Now, is there any forum where the subs actually sit down with those departments involved? It could be municipalities as well, to actually deal with the source, because we can't just be having a, a, a perennial you know, occurrence of this unrest forever, because we, we can see that they actually impact negatively on our, you know, on, on, on the stability of, of the country. That's number one. Number two, the issue of the proliferation of firearms. Um, I, I have my concern there because um, unless we actually deal with that proliferation, um, we are less likely to see a, a decrease, a substantial decrease in the commission of crime using uh, uh, weapons such as firearms. Um, my particular concern is on the issue of the the control or lack thereof on the temporary firearm licenses that get issued to foreigners. Why do we have to actually issue firearm licenses to foreigners if we cannot control them? And also the issue of the control or lack thereof on, on firearms in the hands of foreign security companies. Because in this country there are foreign uh, security companies and that are heavily armed uh, if there is no specific control and surveillance on the movement of those arms and the use thereof. That could also be a, a big problem uh, on the crime, uh, on the crime uh, combating um, strategies in this country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Honorable Flungu, the last one for this round. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, you know, I think sometimes we will need to check quite correctly whether talking to these figures really help us, particularly as Africans. I'll be very, very frank. To me, it tells me about what I already know. Like when I went to Free State uh, on an oversight with members, I think Chairperson will recall. <coughs> You know, on our way to West Bochabello, we saw a huge graveyard on the left-hand side. It's as if there is war. <laughs> a huge graveside. Uh, and uh, when we asked General, uh, forgotten the name, he said, 
That grave site is servicing the community of about 450,000. Thousands of dead bodies. Now it told me that uh, here there is something seriously wrong. And the stats around there were of conduct crime, Mr. Minister, that you have talk, talked of. Now, maybe where I'm driving at, <coughs> those people who are, who are, who are buried there <coughs> are part of uh, the system that we have not changed. Because the, the biggest crime in this country was dispossession of land of these people of this country. Biggest, biggest crime. Whatever that you are trying to do, it's just a, uh, I think uh, you, you, you outlined it, Mr. Minister, that, uh, or the National Commissioner, that those are just some kind of uh, re reactive modes of trying to deal with this. So sometimes we'll have to deal with this to say, does it help to talk to the unknown? Uh, no, 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 to the known, which does not need you to be a scientist. You know, if you go to one marsh or certain sections, you'll definitely get to this. Now, first question, Mr. Minister, you know, there is this thing of a right to life in terms of our constitution. right to life and also protection of our people by <clears throat> and this right to life is protected in the constitution if you go to case at and I'm sure Mr. Minister you'll answer this honestly two issues there one Total extermination of people in a particular hostel of Cleveland without any progress. Even if you ask the detective uh, division of the province, dead silence. Two, the state report talks of uh, rape or sexual uh, offenses. You know, yesterday I was shocked when one young journalist of a particular station who took our people on the very rights that are protected in the Constitution reported about trade port, abuse of African women by employers there had to be arrested by police of Phoenix. I asked myself a question. Gets protected by South African Constitution. Is it the people that many of us had to spend our lives fighting to liberate, or those who have become funders of the system, such that even the repressive arms of states will be used against the very people? If we can respond to that, because I am very, I was very shocked. I am from Kaiser 10 this morning. I took a flight this morning. I was shocked to say, why even journalists get a backlash from the side of the state because of certain people who want to protect dirty practices against our own people. The Honorable Mr. Thank you very much. Yeah. Honorable Spilongu, um, I don't want, uh, are you still continue? Are you finished? Thank you very much. Um, that's the first round. We will come to the second round. Over to the Honourable Minister, as well as the Deputy Minister and the National Commissioner for Responses. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, uh, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members. Uh, indeed, I think uh, some of the interventions and the questions uh, that have been posed are quite uh, critical and useful, and they would also be useful in, 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 in our work as and when we continue. 
uh, as as we continue basically to to uh, to to deal with this particular circumstance in our society, and and then of course on the basis of the constitutional mandate that we have as a South African police service to deal with the issue of uh, of of, uh, of peace and stability in in in, in our communities. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to respond, the Honourable Chair, to the to some of the, 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 the points that have been made. Uh, I would also ask the National Commissioner to come in uh, insofar as other areas that also have been, uh, have been made. Now, the, the, the question posed by the Honourable Chair on the question of resource deployment and shifting and deployment of uh, resources and so forth. I think, you, you know, uh, members of the portfolio committee will remember that when we dealt with the issue of <clears throat> what essentially has got to happen post the Falam Commission's uh, recommendations, we highlighted the fact that there is a need to zoom into three broad categories as part of the overall approach. The one area, of course, is in terms of how do you have got to deal with people as a resource. But the second area associated with that is the question of culture associated with the very same people, the resource that you have. The other one, of course, is the question of your, the, the, the third, third area is, is the question of your, your, your business processes. And there you have got to look at all the other institutional arrangements and, and things of that nature. Now, <clears throat> the, the, when we spoke to the question of priori priorities, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example for instance. The question of how you conduct policing uh, in a rural area, it has got to take into account that circumstance itself but also take into account the social dynamic in that very same rural area and so on. And that's fundamentally different from how you conduct policing, let's say, uh, in, in an urban or semi-urban kind of a, 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 a area, for an example. Now, you, because you have got to, in the, in the first instance, you are dealing with two distinct sort of structural mechanisms. Uh, in a way, and that's why I keep on referring to the question of the of understanding the social dynamic itself when you deal we deal with that, and therefore the manner in which you 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 you, you police and you deploy resources must also take such into account. But you also have other factors that you must also look into the question of a, the, the prevalence and the and the occurrence of a particular type and character of criminality in a particular area, for an example. So that also uh, would have to uh, uh, truly be, 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 be looked into. Now, uh, but I think your question was also, uh, will, will we be able to look into, into that? I'm sure that in the, in, the, in the context of the task team led by to be led by the, the, the Deputy Minister here in that regard, uh, they would have to interrogate a number of those particular factors and inform themselves about what the actual sort of uh, dynamics are and then accordingly uh, take decisions in terms of what it is that is then appropriate that would have to be uh, taken into account uh, in, in dealing with the uh, some of those uh, particular sort of uh, circumstances. Now, the question of, there was also the question raised by the chair insofar as the Central Firearm Registry, and I think other members also have raised the same uh, 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 issue. There is a task team that is working on this particular issue. Uh, and as we speak, it's also looking at finalizing a report on the CFR. I think the members would remember that when there was a summit here, the Deputy Minister also spoke to a report, a specific report, on the Central Firearm Registry because she conducted a visit there. 
and they brought it to the attention of the portfolio committee and, and many of us uh, in this room about what she found there uh, when, when, when that was uh, the case. Now, the, uh, the same thing also with regards to the firearm control uh, uh, legislation, which is uh, <coughs> in, in, in the process. And, and we, 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 have got to, we have got to come back to the portfolio committee to debate such. Now, <clears throat> there are loopholes, for an example, in, in our firearm uh, legislation. And I think at some point, whether it is now or at a later point, we have got to confront these issues, you know, point blank. Uh, there is... <clears throat> There is a, a historical part informing how the, uh, the Firearms Control Act uh, is, is, is crafted as we speak today. Uh, because out of the 1902 Anglo-Boer War, uh, the Treaty of Ferenekeng that was entered into, it had a specific provision also that required to have the kind of law crafted in the manner in which we, we, we currently do. And I think over the over the years uh, <clears throat> that 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 has been <clears throat> that has that has gone on, and I think it's it's something that at some point, because that also in itself informed the question of the gun culture as we have it uh, in our society. But some of the loop, loopholes as well, you know, in the most sort of pointed kind of manner, is you have. I think uh, in, in, in the report, if I'm not mistaken, Commissioner, you, you must have made this uh, one of the slight presentations. I think it is there. <clears throat> you have a situation where those that have got sporting and hunting firearm licenses, for an example, there's no limitation. So in this country, you can easily come across somebody who owns 5,000 firearm licenses. You know, easily. Because you have this loophole that I think, in my view, has also been exploited in one form or the other, a, a, of, 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 of no limitation precisely because it's for hunting or sporting purposes and so on. The other one, of course, is a systemic issue. A, much as the law talks to capping or a threshold insofar as the amount of ammunition that you can acquire, for an example, but there's no system that tracks that you went into a Kruneval, the shooting shop, I don't know what you call it, yeah, a shooting shop, and bought a, a, <clears throat> some, some rounds there, but also next door to the Kruneval, a, a, shooting shop, you have a, a sink shooting shop. So I go there, I also, you know, the same me, you know, but I also buy this. So there's no system that uh, can easily track uh, some of those part loops. So these are the loopholes uh, that are there that we also have got to uh, to, to, to somewhat confront. So you, you can, much as the law prescribes in terms of, you know, uh, what the limit is and so on, but basically you can go around it uh, in a way. So these are the issues that uh, I, I certainly do think we, we have got to uh, we have got to confront. The same also when it comes to the issue of the central firearm registry. Uh, we'll have to come back to the issues because there's also uh, quite some historical background behind the question of the central firearm registry. Uh, now, you 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 will recall, chair, that there have been there have been cases in this country. For instance, I think one of the cases, if I'm not mistaken, commissioner was based here in the Western Cape uh, on you know the Central Firearm Register case, and that's that's a matter that is still uh, uh, you know essentially ongoing. Uh, but we would then say that. We will come back to the portfolio committee on these two issues uh, to have a thorough discussion uh, on them, the, the CFR question, but also the question of the firearm control amendment uh, 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 bill. 
the real reliability of stats and and in here i think i will not miss to to talk about what the uh, honorable uh, member Krunavald uh, spoke to um, it's possible that we may be missing a point the south african police service is constitutionally mandated to deal with the issue of peace, stability, crime, and everything else associated therewith. And you don't have any other institution that is given such a constitutional mandate, for an example. Now, <clears throat> and of course, we, we utilize a particular system. 83% of our people if you if you get raped, if you get beaten up, if you get uh, assaulted, and so on, 83 percent of our people report such cases to our police stations. They walk into the police stations. They don't come to Mr. Kruneval's house, you know, because they, <laughs> there's no reason to do so. Now, <clears throat> I'm, I'm raising this point because. When we say, and I think we have explained the question of the methodology here, uh, for an example, that you can only, as a South African police service, work on the statistics on the basis of what has been, firstly, by, by, by and large, 83.4% of, of which has been brought to your attention, has been reported. Of course, you have the other category, 16.6 percent which has reported an increase where police themselves have got to go out we detect crime we conduct roadblocks we do this we do that and so forth and therefore register successes in so far as that is concerned now <clears throat> if you then say that you doubt statistics by how much do you doubt them what is your Variance, for an example. And what is your scientific calculation for doubting? Can you, can you work on the basis of, let's say, one particular individualistic sort of a, a experience, as you said, a, Mr. Froneman, and then say, because of that, just that and that alone, you, you then decide the fate of the entire spectrum of, the, of crime statistics in this country. Now, if, if that's what we will allow, and I think that's a skewed form of thinking, really, an approach, because you can't use a, much as, by the way, I must also qualify this thing, because I'm not trying to say that that was a good experience to have, you know, the case that you spoke about. I'm not saying I'm condoning it and so on. Surely if you reported a case and you're not, you're not given a case number and so on, it was the wrong thing to do. I accept that. But I'm saying you can't use that and solely just that alone, and say you'll decide the fate of the whole thing and say, no, you doubt these particular statistics, because I think that's wrong in the first instance. So, <clears throat> so you cite another example about uh, a house breaking in Akasha Park. Uh, and you say that it was recorded as state property. Of course, that's a state property where you live. Akasha Park belongs to, to government, to the state. Uh, now, but I think maybe the point that you were trying to raise is that you feel that it's not adequate that such a case uh, was only, you know, uh, dubbed as a damage to property. You know, perhaps it should have been damage to property plus, a, you know, house breaking, I suppose, and, and so on. And I think that's, that's a matter for, 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 for suggestion, really, in terms of how further we can begin to refine the manner in which we capture, as well as, uh, you know, correctly dub our, you know, uh, incidences and so forth. Perhaps I would understand you to be saying that's a suggestion and so on. So that I... <clears throat> 
I, I necessarily, I, would, I wouldn't have a, I wouldn't have a problem. But so it goes also with regards to your assertion that crime is not under control, because that's just simply a statement. And yet the statistics that we put before you, they say over the 10-year period and over the five-year period, there have been a decrease. And that's not speculated. It's worked on the basis of what has been a, a captioned and, and processed a, before us. A, <clears throat> now, and I think for me, we need to try and strike the balance between, and perhaps, you know, Mr. Mr. Honourable Member Singh was also perhaps trying to factor that kind of balance. So then say, you know, there is there is there is an incident in terms of how you you experience it, and there is the question of how that incident is also captured. Um, and, and, and he says perhaps those are two, those are two different, uh, different things because a, the, a, you know, going through a particular experiences, experience also you know, develops a perception. Okay. But capturing that experience itself is captured by somebody who's not associated necessarily with your incident and, 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 and so on. A, and you may have a, what you want to refer to as what? Call it a disjunction, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, it's, it's a, we can only work on the basis of what is, a, of, of, of what is here before us and how it, you know, what has been captured accordingly in, in our records by people who you know, report incidences of this, of this particular, <coughs> of, of, uh, of, of these particular occurrences. Um, so, I, and it's a, it's, 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 it's a matter of debate because I don't also want to, because I'm not going to be categorical like yourself, I don't want to create an impression that says there's no crime in South Africa. I'm not saying that, all right? A, but you can't not acknowledge the fact that there has been a decrease over the years. And of course, in, 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 in a particular 12 months, and of course in this particular instance around issues of murders, of murder, a, over the past what, two years we have seen Increases there at that particular level. So, but to then say that it's not under control, I think it's not true. Uh, when indeed your figures do show that uh, you have uh, these particular increases, and the point that is raised by uh, Honourable Mbele, for an example here, it's it's, <coughs> we, it's it's a point that we had said. Look, we, we do need to uh, to take comfort in the fact that there is. A, a registered sort of decrease in the issue of sexual offences as well. And, a, and, and you will find that it's possibly a number of different sort of factors that are at play there. One of them is, of course, the FCS unit, which has, been, has done an excellent job in terms of you know, dealing with these cases. But the other one is a social consciousness issue. I mean, if, if in South Africa today you were to take stock of how many NGOs and government programs are there just on dedicated to the issue of conscientizing society about uh, sexual violence, for an example. You know, you'll find a myriad of these particular formations out here in our society, and all of those things. A, a, you, you'll find that they have either a direct or indirect impact in also a, reducing some, some of this. A prosecution, successful prosecution, for an example, is another element into this. So you'll find that it's a number of uh, factors that are at play that also contribute to the reduction as, as we see it. Now, and I think the lesson that we should learn out of this, because again, the question of sexual violence is not, is, is, is not, it's not the type of crime that you can detect, detect per se. It's, it's the crime that we react to as the police says and when it gets reported. Now, <clears throat> but the combination 
of a number of efficient sort of factors, for example, including the FCS unit, including the levels of uh, social conscientization in our, in, our, in our society around the scourge of sexual violence against women and children and so forth. Perhaps, um, perhaps that's, we can also draw a leaf out of that, and that's the point that I think Mr. Singh you were also uh, referring to. Uh, the multidisciplinary sort of approach uh, in relation to issues of... of Sheikh Imam, sir. Sorry. Sheikh Imam. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Imam, yeah. yeah. I'm well known for, <laughs> for naming people wrongly. <laughs> Miss Kolha Ballard, <laughs> she's smiling at me because she knows that I've always uh, given her a mistaken identity of sorts. Uh, uh, honorable Sheikh Imam. So, yeah, but I'm saying we can draw a leaf out of that. There are positives, I think, that we can draw out of that, even in relate, out of the sexual violence issue, for instance, the experience and that, that we're beginning to have there, in relation to issues such as murder, for an example. Now, there is a sense that, and I think we need to dissuade this thinking in our society, including ourselves as a... As, as a uh, as politicians, uh, I use that term very reluctantly because I'm not a politician. But you know, including ourselves here as politicians. Uh, <laughs> no, Mr. Crowley, well, wait. Uh, <clears throat> there is this thinking that we think that murder can only be solved by police, and it can't be. It can never be. It's impossible. Now, I think we have, in, in the presentation, we, we have cited this thing that, you know, murder occurs largely amongst acquaintances, people who are related, people who are friends, pe families, and whatever. And those people, when they are going about their own ordinary sort of businesses, for an example, a social life, they don't invite police. They don't, they don't say, oh yeah, myself and the <coughs> Honorable Sheikh Imam here were going drinking, and I know that he doesn't drink. So we go there drinking, and so on, and then we say, hey, hey come policemen, come and observe us uh, whilst we're drinking, and so on. It, we don't do that. In the same way that Miss Barnard married as she is, she doesn't know whether her husband is going to murder her, for an example. Uh, at any time between this hour and, and tomorrow. Oh, sorry, I'm just making. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. But I'm just making an example. Uh, it's it's uh, when we say that it's something that occurs within closed knit sort of associated people and families and so. It's precisely that. So what does that make the problem to be? It makes the problem to be a social issue which requires largely advocacy. We need, we need the starting point, we need to teach our people that the fact that I disagree with you, Mr. Cronival, does not mean I must give you a punch in the face for an example. It just doesn't mean that. It means I must, we must possess adequate skills to be able to resolve our differences, if we have our differences, and be able to work, them, work over them, and so on. Now, <clears throat> because it starts with such small things. I mean, when we presented, when the commissioner was presenting the domino effect, we may not, we, we, we may take that slide uh, quite, uh, quite slightly, but it's, it's true. It starts with a small thing, you know, a backhand slap, sort of. And the next thing, it graduates into a punch. From a punch, it graduates into a, a knife, from a knife into, into a gun, and the next thing is that you are dead, you know. So <clears throat> these are the patterns that we must uh, essentially, uh, in, you know, interfere with and begin to stem that polarity. And, and that's why we're making the point, you require social mobilization, you require all of us at political leadership level, at different levels of our society, to put up an effort around the question of 
<coughs> reducing the levels of violence in, the, in our society. Now, so I agree with all our members that the question of of, of uh, <clears throat> the 0 0.9 increase in the murder rate, for an example, registered this in the year under review, uh, is a cause for concern. We should be, should be concerned about that. But we should also get ourselves activated. And I like the idea uh, <clears throat> that is, 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 is thrown in by uh, uh, Honorable Sheikh Imam about the question of a multidisciplinary approach in dealing with uh, some of these issues and associated issues such as drug and alcohol abuse, for an example. Um, <clears throat> of course, we, I'm, I'm, not, you know, I'm not saying that we have not been doing work with other state agencies. We have been, such as uh, social development, for an example. They, they are also quite uh, involved in, 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 in this issue. But also, we have been coordinating our work around the question of uh, drug trafficking uh, at both the regional level uh, here uh, in, the, in the African continent as well as in internationally to look at uh, <clears throat> how we have got to deal with this. Because the problem with the question of drug trafficking uh, and human trafficking, by the way, is that you can't just think that you're going to deal with the problem here. Um, in, in any of the suburbs around the country without understanding the international dynamic and the modus operandi at that particular level. So we, you need to, to deal with the entire value chain in a sense when, the, when it comes to that. I'm being reminded here that in fact a, even at the time when there was a, a discussion on the firearm control amendment a, a bill here I did mention the point that on the questions of the patterns of violence, we, 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 we have been advocating, and we still do, advocate for a national dialogue on that issue, eh, amongst other things. Um, we had cited, for an example, I think we had said we wanted to have it in June, July, they say, and we couldn't be precisely because of a number of other pressure points that also came up. Eh, but the fact is that it's still on the agenda. Eh, I don't want, I know that there's a date in November that has been cited and so on. Uh, now this is in regard to your point, uh, uh, <coughs> Honorable Imam, uh, Sheikh Imam, sorry, uh, yeah, Honorable Sheikh Imam. Uh, uh, now, you know, I'm, I'm still going, uh, it's an administrative issue in terms of when exactly do I agree with the date or I don't and so forth. It's a matter that uh, you can, we can certainly sort, sort out, a, we can sort out outside of this meeting. Um, the, I would suggest that you are making you are making what I would think a valid point because I don't want to understand your intervention as a question per se. Uh, the question of you know your violent uh, your violent unrest. Now remember that I had just spoken about the question of the prevalence of violence in our society, generally speaking. This thing just is, is an amazing thing, and I can make this thing as an example because we've seen it. Uh, even when we are pursuing a legitimate right, such as the right to strike, for an example, we change on nothing else but withdrawal of labor. But in the process, <laughs> to validate that, we think, you know, that then the strike is valid if I beat somebody up or I damage uh, property and whatever. So it's, it's, it, it also talks to this kind of psyche that we have got, uh, that we certainly have got to work hard to try and expunge. Uh, we, you know, from, from our society and so on. So the question of a multidisciplinary approach is uh, it, it does take place, but 
only as and when as a matter of, as a manner of intervention uh, given a particular occurrence. For, the, for an example, in the in the Northern Cape, uh, when the I can't remember the place was it Goruman? Yes, when the, there was a disruption of schooling activity, you know, adults the way they were demanding a road, construction of a road, but they also decided to interfere with the right of children to go to school. So there was no way that as the police were going to deal with it without working with the municipality, without working with the Department of Basic Education and of course other uh, uh, organizations outside government uh, <clears throat> to look at how we needed to resolve that particular issue and so forth. <coughs> the difficulty Excuse me, the difficulty is just simply setting it up when there was there is no problem uh, for an example. But then as a manner as a man, as a, as, a, as a manner of intervention, uh, as and when an incident incident of such a nature would have arisen, we we we, we, we do work uh, together with other state agencies uh, to try and find solutions. Uh, Honorable Mfloma. Uh, Um, does it help to talk to the known? Uh, it does. It's, it's the same thing as uh, I think many of you here every week you go to church and you say exactly the same thing that you said like the other week and the other week and the other week and so on. Uh, that somebody's a savior, you, you say that, you know, repeatedly. Now, <clears throat> We say those things precisely, Wananjoman, uh, because it is part of trying to galvanize ourselves morally towards a particular direction. So even in this particular instance, I think it, it does help to talk to the known. You know, the known in this particular instance is that we have these negative elements within our society and let's talk about them. Let's talk about them with the view of finding a solution, of course. So that's what the effort uh, should be. It, I think for me it would be, it would be, <clears throat> it would be incorrect uh, to then say, yeah, but this thing is known, so we shouldn't talk about it and so on, because by so doing, I think we'll be uh, essentially conducting social irresponsibility uh, in a way. So we should, uh, we, should, we, should, we should encourage that we should continue to engage uh, around, around, uh, around such matters. Um, you, you are raising the question, yes, for example, the, it's just that I do not have a further update in terms of not only just statistics in relation to the situation as a clip Nawamashu because Nawamashu was still. <coughs> this, this, these things that they have also fled up. Um, now, even there too, I would also venture to say, and I think like we did uh, with regards to the circumstances, say, uh, hostel Lagomashu, for an example, that you know there has had to be uh, the pulling together of different social formations and political formations to deal with the question of uh, the flare-up of violent uh, uh, actions there in that hostel, and we have seen uh, you know a, a decrease uh, that was registered and so forth. Uh, but recently, I had uh, there is uh, a bit of a flare-up and so forth. So. All parties involved would have to continue to find ways and means of stemming the tide against the killings, Eclipse, Nago, Mashuna, and everywhere else. Um, but of course, we'll have to take stock of, the, of, 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 of this particular uh, problem. Um, yeah, uh, Ms. Colaban, the, the question of you know, I think yeah, I would also take it that it's a concern, the question of the murder rate, the upward trend, and so on. But I think I've responded to that question, that, you know, police deal with the issue of murder, post facto, in a sense. Um, uh, <clears throat> however, 
the greatest amount of work is the work that we need to do ourselves at a community level, for instance, broadly at a social level, to deal with the question of, uh, of, of, uh, of violent behavior as well as uh, subsequently the issue of, uh, of murder. Um, yeah, uh, uh, National Commissioner, you, you know, I think you may have got to respond to uh, there are issues such as police attacks. Um, you may want to say something about methodology in terms of reliability of stats. Uh, there was also an issue by Ms. Molevats, the independent crime statistics company. You. Hey. <laughs> I think. Uh, Yeah, but I think I must have responded to this one too. You know, the, we have a constitutional mandate. The, the South African Police Service is the only agency of state that we have got to deal with the issue of the, of, of the crime sort of instance in the country. We don't have any other. Uh, and therefore, the question of the uh, of, of crime states will continue to, to play our, our role there. Yeah, uh, National Commissioner. Thank you, Minister. National Commissioner or Deputy Minister? National Commissioner, you're welcome. Thank you, Chair. Just to touch on, the Minister has touched on a number of issues. I'll start with the issue that was raised around the uh, just what the minister finished on, on reliability, just to indicate that the state's SA also has a mandate as a state institution in terms of Statistics Act 96 of 1999 to coordinate statistical production wide, countrywide. And uh, crime stats is one such. So the journey that we mentioned earlier on to, need to travel from what we currently announce as a national to official states is a very crucial journey so that crime states could come and occupy the status of GDP, CPI in the country and there are very strict protocols on how such uh, a process uh, is, is, is journeyed. We've started that, this is why now we're starting to talk about a, 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 a crime clearance certificate that we get and the clearance committee we are subjected to particular protocols. So that in itself starts introducing independence and particular collection and uh, general assurance protocols internally chairperson. Um, I then also want to touch on what uh, the, to add on to what the minister has said, Remember the issue of uh, the Police Act does allow us to establish units. That is why we have not only the FCS, we have the stock theft unit, which is also showing some successes. So from time to time, where you are seeing very serious complex crimes that require particular management, I'm sure the minister would not um, hesitate to pronounce on those type of uh, uh, units. So it is a tool that is available to us in accordance with the Act to assist us to deal with particular issues. We have as, uh, the Hawks in whatever way you look at it, a very special dedicated commercial crimes uh, unit that we're having and is having successes. So that is an available mechanism for managing uh, crimes. The issue of the 7,000 dockets, as indicated in my presentation, Chair, those dockets are part and parcel of the statistics that we are dealing with. We have said the only crime, the dockets that are then excluded are those that are unfounded and there is a protocol and a way of dealing with those, so we check all those. Um, the issues of um, analysis of increasing gang activities, I think uh, we're learning a lot from the Western Cape. We're even getting into a process where we are talking to authors who are assisting us to write some um, dictionary and language 
because we are starting to have police who are now expert over years. And that is going to assist us also to share such with other areas. So that's an area that uh, the, the, the province of Western Cape is assisting us quite significantly on. Chairperson, just to deal with, uh, again, just the 7,000. We have a protocol on how we deal with, uh, uh, there's, um, it's standing order 325, if I'm not wrong, of the detectives. That really talks to how we manage these dockets. The inspector rate, and it's not only in free state. One of the things that we've started doing was saying, let's analyze the dockets that we're talking about. If somebody's holding 400 dockets, what's the age analysis of those dockets? What nature of crimes is it having? Why is he sitting with those? Is it real dockets? Is it dockets that should have been done? So that analysis is taking place. We've also, Chairperson, included in terms of our own internal performance operationally, the performance management of our sub-6 schedule of the, of, 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 of the detectives. So it is those type of things where we see, you know, we need to look at all those crime categories, to start, the, the docket categories to say, why are you sitting with an abundance of dockets here? What are they about? And uh, that makes it difficult for us. If somebody is sitting with 400 dockets and you do an age analysis, you find that they have dockets that are more than four years old and you're starting to say, what is sitting in that? So you need to check those type of issues. So that process is starting to roll out because we are heightening our performance in terms of the detectives. But also to mention that all those dockets, chairperson, they will, if new evidence comes in, that docket is on brought forward. It will be pulled and it will be investigated. Some of them is because they are not finding people, there is no evidence that is come, but if any new evidence, that docket is still alive, it can still be investigated and be dealt with. We are also saying it's important for us to communicate with the victims so that we give feedback to explain what is happening. So that's an area which we have reported here at the committee to say we want to go beyond just saying, yes, come, thank you for coming to the po police station. Here's your case record. We must use that capacity to be able to say, your docket is sitting at the state. Your docket is now being archived because we haven't been able to trace and whatever. So those type of issues are some of the performance areas we're looking into with the detectives chairperson. Then there was the issue around aggravated robberies and robbery residential. I wish to mention that chairperson, the issue that has been raised, you'd recall that the cabinet had asked that uh, we prioritize, for instance, trio crimes as sub subcategories or whatever. But those categories are already sitting in the broad categories that we're talking about. The issue of robbery residential is sitting in aggravated robberies. And I can quickly touch on that one because it's part of the trio crimes. Robbery resi uh, residential in the previous financial year was at 7.4% uh, positive but it has reduced a little bit in that positivity to be at 5.2%, but it is sitting with the detail that is sitting in, in, in our crime states. And what we would also, maybe Chairperson, through you mention, yeah, it was 7.4 in 13-14, in, in it is now 5.2 in 14-15. Chair, what, 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 what we also, some of the sub sub categories, if there is particular interest, we would prepare and be able to pull them from the broad categories and be able to bring them to the committee, you know, because at times we focus on the 21 and uh, those uh, and, and, and ignore some of the sub categories that are of interest and of significance. So we will be able to deal with that one. I think, Minister, those are some of the things that uh, you've dealt with the firearms. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Minister, you've raised your hand. No, thank you very much. I, 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 I have not checked with the Commissioner here whether 
she, the question of the police attacks uh, was was uh, was an issue raised by uh, uh, by Honourable Mark. Firstly, it's a very concerning development. The question of police attacks. Uh, in fact, police attacks represent the most backward of what you know amongst ourselves as, uh, as South Africans, because. Remember that the police are the extension of the society. You know, so the police are us ourselves. So if society kills police who are killing ourselves, you know, so it's, it, it represents the most backward, basically, in a sense. <clears throat> um, so on the one hand, you require, as a, as a, as a manner of intervention, social conscientization, also even around that, that, around that issue, in, in, in point blank terms, and it's an ideological question. You know, so it, we have got to, uh, to delve into it. Now, <clears throat> on the other hand, where, where I agree with uh, Mr. Marke, for, for an example, is that there were cases where some of these were just sporadic, in a sense, you know, uncoordinated and so forth. Uh, and the situation has got to be, we have got to continue analyzing it. Uh, one of the, and I, must, I, I, I want to limit myself here in the first instance about what I need, on, what I need to say about this one. For instance, in the Eastland, a, your first lotus areas and whatever in the in the in the Eastland, some of these incidences are now assuming a, the number gang sort of approach. Yeah. A, now, and, and and that then must begin to tell you in terms of a, firstly what kind of a problem are we beginning to have there, but also the. The, the kind of a response that we will also require, in a sense, because that's no longer sporadic, that's an organized formation. Your number gangs are, are organized sort of formations. Now, a, so I'm saying I've just picked up, for an example, that there is also that developing trend in, 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 in such an area, but I'm sure that we're also likely to pick up many more uh, sort of other uh, sort of trends, for an example, in different parts of the country around the question of, uh, of police killings. Um, not so long ago, the, the, the National Commissioner also, I think, advised the uh, uh, South Africans on the question of, 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 of a, a, a response plan, a rapid response kind of plan, for an example, to deal with the question of, uh, of police killings, uh, which, besides the question of what needs to be done at a broader sort of community level, around the question of conscientizing on ourselves that we can't continue with something like this. But there are also measures themselves and situational analysis and trends that would have to be continued to be studied and analyzed to also inform the manner in which we prepare ourselves as uh, members of the police service, for an example, as and when we assume duty, or even of duty for that matter, around uh, the question of uh, securing ourselves. So indeed, the, the point I want to make, though, is that you know, yourselves as responsible political leadership, uh, for an example, you, 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 you have got to be activated around such an issue. Um, and, 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 and that's why we also need to be measured. <clears throat> uh, I think I once uh, uh, said this thing some few months back in the chamber, that we also need to be balanced in the manner in which we deal with a criticism leveled against the police service. Uh, it's something else, for instance, to criticize me or the National Commission about many other things that we may want and so forth. But let's respect the fact that these are professionals. You know, we have got to value their work.
Oh, in fact, I was answering Mr. Cronenberg at the time on that question, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken. Uh, <clears throat> to say we need to value our police, and we can't, at the political le leadership level, dish out a negative message that then says to ordinary you know, people on the ground that we do not take police seriously and therefore they are of no value. Because indeed, they are likely to react in a particular manner, in, 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 in the manner in which they will then continue to relate <coughs> with the members of the police service. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a point. So we do need to make a political intervention at the level of where we are ourselves, a, you know, the people that we lead, to begin to educate them about the question of the value that the police actually render uh, to, to the existence of uh, South Africa as a country and ourselves as a, as a, as a society. Uh, <clears throat> so I wanted, I wanted to say, say just that much about the question of the police attacks and police killings. Uh, uh, Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, honourable members, maybe just to indicate, I know the, the Minister's got a two o'clock appointment with the fourth estate, and they are, I think, um, looking forward to that. But I'll allow one question per member, very short. They were, I allowed four mini-speeches today. Um, so those speeches are now out. We have heard them. They're on record. So let's go to the topic of the day, the stats. We will allow you at other meetings to, again, do some mini-speeches. So. Uh, Topic of the day, one question per member, and then, we, then I'll f um, close. Um, those members who don't want to come in, they're also welcome. Uh, Honourable Marke. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I asked something about Lumpopo. What, is, what are the trends? What's happening there? Is, is it because of witchcraft or what's happening? Thank you. Thank you. Honourable Marke Sheikh. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. One, <laughs> one, one very quick question. My understanding is very simple. There is lack of consequences. And if you, I'll give you a very quick example. Take Hanover Park. There's a police station. Responsibility of that station commander with the officers is to safeguard the interests of the people in that area. How is it possible that drug trafficking can thrive in an area like Hanover Park, even though there's a police station with all these police officers and nothing happens. So I'm saying what action would we take to ensure that those responsible in these stations perform their duties and do it well? If not, there must be consequences. And added to that is the fact that I think we did discuss previously, Minister, in attracting the right quality of people right from, from school level. Thank you. Honourable Grunewald, if you can just wait, the two ladies, they're going to just give an example how to ask a question without a speech. Honourable Mullabat, we'll come to you. Yeah, thanks, thanks Chairperson. My, my question is somehow going to sound a bit weird, but I've got a good reason for it. When a docket is opened, and after three minutes, the same docket is withdrawn, does it help? as far as the performance. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Mimula, and then Honourable Grunewald. So, uh, sorry, Honourable Grunewald, just Honourable Mimula, and then we'll come to you. Thanks. Thank you, Chairperson. Will the crime stats be released quarterly by State SA? Thank you. Honourable Grunewald. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, just on a point of clarity first. Do I understand from the Commissioner that we get the, f the detailed statistics will be published, for, for instance, where we get the raw figures and not only the percentages, just for point of clarity, like we received it in the past. Uh, if I can come to my question, Chairperson, I just want to say my question is part of the fact what the Minister said, that crime is not, when I said that crime is out of control. What he is actually saying is, is that we only have the statistics of 83,4% of crime in South Africa, firstly. I will get in another time in a debate with the Honourable Minister when it comes to crime out of control, but if you, I look at communities, complaints about no policing, uh, vigilantes and necklacing, then I think it is out of control. But that is a, a, my question to the Honourable Minister. Minister, these statistics are old statistics. It's statistics of last year. 
We are reporting to the Portfolio Committee of Police on statistics. Please, is it possible that we can get quarterly crime statistics that we can deal with it in the committee to see what we have to do now? It's no use looking, yes, it's only a perspective of what the crime statistics were. Can we do that, please? Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Bele. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm going to try to rephrase this question differently because it didn't get a clear or direct answer. I'm not sure if that's Maybe because it. Until this oh, yes, perhaps that's why. Um, we can all have full attention. Chair, um, so we've had the assertion that crime is. <laughs> Chair. I don't believe any part you own. You are Bailey. Should I protect you? No, Chair. I think I can handle it. <laughs> We've had the assertion that um, crime, uh, in many ways, is a reflection of our society, um, and that speaks to uh, many of the violent categories of crime. Um, and yet we, again, as I said in the previous round, we've seen this decrease in terms of the sexual offences. Now, the question I asked then was, what is this attributed to? Uh, it didn't get addressed, but, so, but my question now is, if, if crime is a, is, a, is a reflection of the society, uh, and we know that our society has uh, very strong roots of patriarchy and, um, and, 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 and violence. Given that background, what is this downward trend in the FCS environment attributed to? Because there's clearly some kind of policing action in spite of the context that is addressing that. What do we attribute that to? Thank you. Honorable Kota Barnard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is actually to Stats SA, uh, if I may. Uh, I need to know, and I heard a great deal of what you said, but I, I don't think it means that you actually audited the figures, physically went to the stations to dig deep and order to the validity of them in that we know of instances where an attack and beating of a civilian is recorded as theft of a cell phone. Um, so that kind of audit um, to see that the dockets are a true reflection of the crime situation, because of course that's what's needed, is, is, a, is, is a proper audit. Um, and one has to question the decision not to release the murder rate uh, as, for example, uh, uh, per 100,000 of the population. Now, that is the international comparison. So uh, I don't see it anywhere. I've been looking online since we sat down, just for Honorable Kronewald's. It's been up for hours. Um, so I just wondered why that decision was taken. And do you also take into consideration uh, in your investigations um, how the statistics relate to resourcing at stations. I was at Norcom Park in Ekerleni last night where 121 of the operational members, uh, out of that 76 had failed their competency certificates. So we have massive under-resourcing which should be addressed in relation to the crime statistics uh, per station. But it's just not happening. Thank you. Thank you very much. On Congo. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on slide number 27, um, there is a, it is actually reported there that some 686 police uh, were arrested uh, for various types of crimes in 2014 and 2015. I, I'm interested to know how many of these were successfully you know, prosecuted because I, I want to believe that arresting them is one thing, but actually achieving a successful prosecution is another. Thank you. Honorable Thlongu, you're the last. No, that was your person. <clears throat> Very short. Uh, I, I want to know, Mr. Minister, in all this, uh, and maybe you'll pardon me, I didn't say, didn't mean necessarily that I uh, don't have to talk about this, but Talking about really the unknown, no person will go to bed without food. When people are poor, they will do whatever thing that is regrettable. 
But uh, <clears throat> in your future statistics, Mr. Minister, is it possible maybe to come up with a mechanism to say, here, these are the prevalent, prevalent crimes, then maybe then we get even to know the economic conditions of those particular communities so that maybe we can at a political level be able to harness other departments to deal with what touched me in free state i even said it's extermination of our people to see such a huge grave it's poverty that is killing people most you cannot just teach police as a repressive arm of state to deal with that particular thing it will just go out of hand even if you can add them to be thousand times bigger than the contingent of that particular community it's serious serious what i saw there you can't have it like a, it's, a, it's a war grave i know it's bad man that thing thank you honorable members that's the questions for today i'm over to the minister and the national commissioner and the deputy minister thank you no, just two general points. Maybe let me start with the <clears throat> with the point raised by Honourable Mshong, and I think it's a, it's an established fact. This thing you don't require any other study. It's an established fact. The the linkage or the causal link between the extent of poverty and socio-economic conditions that are not sound, and the prevalence of crime, for an example. It's an established fact. It's historical uh, in this country. Um, the same thing also, interestingly, that <clears throat> even when it comes to issues like uh, drug abuse and alcohol abuse, um, you, you, you'd know what I'm talking about. In, 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 in most of the areas that, that, that we live in, uh, there is a high level of intoxication. Eh? Um, uh, you know, <clears throat> and, 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 and that is what is, is, is really concerning because the, <clears throat> the, 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 the significant uh, that problem is largely resident in, in working class areas, in poor communities and so forth. So it's a serious problem. Uh, so it's, a, it's an established fact, but the, the fact of the matter also is that it, 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 all it says is that our work is not complete yet uh, in terms of dealing with the broader sort of social circumstance in a, in a sense, in the manner that the social circumstance itself would uh, produce reduced levels and patterns of crime and violence in our society, for an example. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a I, for me, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a critical point and I think it's a valuable point. It's a, it should actually be a rallying point right across ourselves as political parties, that it is a circumstance that we've got to effectively sort of uh, deal with. So that's, that's the one part. Now, <clears throat> I've been asked this question about the release of statistics on a quarterly basis. Uh, not only now, but also before. Um, now, there is, a, there is a cabinet position on the issue taken some time back. Now, there is there is a discussion somewhere else at the level of government to, to begin to say, but shouldn't we look at maybe reviewing that and how does that impact on issues of planning processes, for an example. Uh, but I'm saying it's a discussion in one corner somewhere else and I'm not going to, you know, to, to get much into it, if, if I may put it that way. Uh, it's there's, there's, there's a view that says maybe for better alignment and planning purposes, we may have got to review the question of the annual release of statistics and so on. But then how often? Is it quarterly? Is it 
you know, once or twice a year, and so on. I mean, that's that's part of the part of the discussion. But I think as and when we reach a particular point around that, I think we'll then advise uh, uh, accordingly uh, in regard to to that. There is also a view that says, but some of the <coughs> trends in crime they don't take. It's difficult to follow them. Uh, and conceptualize them properly. You do require a little bit of time to study them over a period of time and so forth. Uh, there's also that view, uh, amongst other things. So the question would be, you know, how do you then balance the whole thing up, I suppose? Uh, how do you also satisfy that some of the criminal trends may take longer than your three months or, or so? Uh, and how would that impact on planning and intervention sort of plans, for an example, that you may want to design and so on? I think that's part of an ongoing sort of discussion uh, and, uh, and debate. Uh, Mr. Mbele, you, 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 you were out when I responded to this question. And I, I think you should pay me for the, if I've got to repeat this. <laughs> <laughs> it's called what? A resp response fee or something like that. Uh, precisely because I, I was saying, look, <clears throat> the question of the decrease in, in, in the occurrence of sexual uh, sort of uh, uh, offenses, it's attributable to a number of uh, different factors, uh, contributing factors. Of course, the efficiency internally, as you see, in terms of how the FCS unit is functioning, is one particular matter. It's a contributing factor. But also, remember that there is prosecution also. Uh, if, if, you, if you yield successful sort of a, a, a conviction rate, around sexual offenses and sexual violence, the kind of cases, cases against women and children, surely that's also a direct sort of a contributing factor amongst other things. But also the fact that in South Africa today you have a myriad of organized formations. I think the question of advocacy around the question of, of you know, stopping the, the, the what? The, the, the gender-based violence, for an example, is, 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 is really high on the sort of the social and political agenda. Now, <clears throat> so all of those particular factors, so it's, it's a, you may find that even if you were to conduct further studies on the issue, that it's possible to find that it's not going to be just one singular intervention that therefore yields a particular sort of decrease of this nature. Uh, uh, the, I think over the years, uh, South Africa has also been experiencing an increase in the number of uh, people reporting cases of uh, sexual abuse or domestic abuse or gender-based violence and so forth, you know, that there is a level, high level of consciousness uh, today in South Africa as opposed to at any other time before, I think, precisely because your government agencies uh, are driving programs uh, around this. They are also collaborating with the NGO sector in, you know, in the advocacy kind of approach around issues of this nature. You also have successful sort of conviction rates also you know, by our judiciary and so on. So it's a combination of a number of factors. Of course, the FCS unit uh, within the police service also effectively doing its work there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you what my fee is out, outside of this meeting, uh, Mr. Mbele. Thank you very much. <laughs> National Commissioner, are you going to deal with the remaining ones? Chairperson, thank you very much. Let me deal with the issue of Limpopo, the issues that... Uh, we are finding there. Firstly, let me indicate that Limpopo is also one of those rural provinces where um, we need to also, like Eastern Cape, to up our, our game in terms of um, innovative policy for provinces such as uh, those ones. There are challenges in terms of uh, 
policing in those places. Indeed, police operations, as indicated, have picked up. The issue of influx, also as indicated, is a very serious uh, contributor to this um, area. And as I've said, if we look at, even if we compare with other clusters, you look at the impact of influx on our education and our hospitals and all those type of issues, we are all, you know, as um, administrators, considering to the fact that that is having an impact on how we're operating. We've also seen an increase in terms of uh, public protests. If you think of the Malamurilas of last year, the northern area, Midupi area, so there's been a lot of core business diversion for Limpopo also, taking, absorbing a lot of our police into those uh, type of uh, activities. But there are other also other uh, forms of crimes that are concerned. If you take, for instance, Toyando and Mankwing and Sushiru come in a little bit uh, strong on issue of uh, sexual offenses, you start seeing some of those indicators driving their levels. We've also looked into recapacitation of that area in terms of uh, people and uh, reorganization of uh, the people in that area. And if I look at their first and second quarter performance, it's much, it's markedly different from what was happening last year. So I'm hoping for a much better and improved performance in that area. And uh, just historically, um, what I found when I got into the organization, there was a lot of baselining that had to be looked into in terms of state uh, issues. So that also are picking up. I recall that uh, it's one of the provinces where there were even criminal cases against some of the police for mal recording during a uh, general decox time. So we are rebaselining also to ensure that we the integrity of our data collection and uh, the capacity there is what it should be. So we are we we, we would punish and fire anybody who underreports there. So it's some of the issues that we're working on there. Um, chairperson, I think. Uh, let me just see if the minister has touched on everything. There was an issue around uh, uh, our our. Uh, uh, our, 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 our raw data, yes, in a similar fashion that we've done in the past online in terms of our website. As we finish the announcement, we will upload all the raw data. It will be there, it will be available. In our printed uh, stats report, it will also be reflected, Chairperson, it will be delivered with the, with the, with the annual report to the portfolio committee, so that data is still available. Our approach in terms of re reporting chairperson, we had indicated already in the previous report that uh, we are using raw numbers and not ratios, but we give a, re a formula in our report and our basis. Anyone who wants to do a comparison in terms of ratios can be able to take the raw figures and compute them into ratios. But our basis for reporting is raw figures, Chairperson. The issue that was raised by Honorable Mulibati on the docket that is opened for three minutes and closed that's a very complex and intricate one. And uh, ordinarily, I'd be asking myself if it's unfounded because maybe this person had parked wrongly and now discovered that his car is still there in the airport, then that can happen. But ordinarily, we would be concerned of a majority of people coming to open dockets and close them. It's almost a, a consumption, a negative consumption of a of energy from both the victim as well as the police, but we would, if the, those type of issues we would look into, I don't know, unless if there's an error from the person who's reporting, I don't believe us as the police have the capacity to do that if somebody's actually reporting, unless indeed there's just something unfounded. But uh, maybe I would, we would want to ad ad understand more the dynamics behind that to say what are the issues, maybe we can give an extended answer in terms of that chair. 
um, there was an issue around the uh, thriving drug business. An example was given of Hanover Park, and there's a police station. I just want to go back to that to say it's important for the police indeed to ensure that there's visibility, they do their work. But also that thriving business, it's important for the communities to also play a role because uh, our intelligence lies in the community. If they are coming forward and they know their circumstances and their environments inform us, they would be able to assist us to do the work because that basic intelligence in the community lies in the community. So it's a, a working together exercise that we need to look into. And um, I mean, you know, we were discussing with a group of people where we were saying at schools, we have a role to play as the police. The municipality has a role to play, to, you know, even simple health inspectors to check the nature of food that is being sold by those street hawkers because then they can test some of the cookies that are there to start saying, are they real cookies or are they whatever. The health inspectors can also play a role in assisting us to do so. The teachers can play a role in teaching children to say, these are the good food to buy and all that. And um, the issue of zoning of businesses, the, the municipality can play a role to start saying you cannot have a shebeen right in front of a school because those children will come out and drink. So there is a lot of work that has to be done by all of us, including us, the police. And it is that collaboration that more and more is proving to be an area that requires all, all of us to look into. Um, the issue of the 686 chairperson police that were arrested, we can give a progress report on that just to indicate where that is sitting. It's not information we have at hand now. Um, I think, Chair, that, yeah. Oh, then there's, that's, yeah. that's, uh, SA to report on uh, some of the issues. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Chair. I think as, as alluded on the Statistician General, what we did, it's more the SASCAF light and not the full SASCAF. And some of the indicators that we are indicating there are part of the full SASCAF, which we not only talking about the checking of the resources, but also the efficient use of those resources as part of the full SASCAR flight. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Every question answered. Thank you very much. Minister, anything finally from you? Honourable Chair, honourable members, no, thank you very much. Now, I just wanted to uh, thank uh, yourself and the members of the Portfolio Committee for uh, granting us this opportunity. I know that it's a recess, uh, and for honourable members to have taken time out to come and congregate down here in Cape Town uh, to receive this report, we are very, uh, we are very grateful uh, for for that. Uh, <clears throat> but I also want to submit to me, Mr. Front, Honourable Member Kronewald has left. Uh, just to you know, take on to that point uh, and, 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 and just appreciate uh, his comments on this thing. We are very particular about the fact that uh, our work belongs to the institutions of governance. A public institutions of governance, and and and, uh, and the fact here is that you know we felt that it's important. It would be important, and, and I think that from this point moving forward, it would be important that <coughs> a, we follow a particular sequence. A, members of parliament, they are custodians and representatives of public interests. So it's, it becomes uh, important that our work must also uh, <clears throat> be filtered uh, at this particular level before any other uh, engagement. And so, so thank you very much uh, for, 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 for affording us uh, such an opportunity, uh, Chairperson and honorary members. Thank you. And of course, uh, Mr. Mpele, after this meeting.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Minister and members, uh, for the interaction today. Yes, Minister, as we said earlier, we welcome the approach by the Minister to come to the Portfolio Committee. We think it's appropriate, and I think it set a good example for other members of Cabinet. But maybe just eight uh, points from our side in terms of evaluating today. Um, I think the Portfolio Committee on Police welcomes the innovation of Stats SA to evaluate the validity and the representativity of the SAP's annual statistics. We are, of course, will also await the report of the Auditor General in that regard. Then the increase in contact crime is concerning and more should be done by SAP's management in collaboration with community structures to innovate strategies to bring contact crime down. We believe that the reduction in crime against women and children is welcomed. We believe that um, complaints with regard to sexual offences and the FCE units needs to be supported and all stakeholders must play their part. The trends in increasing gang violence is concerning and needs to be addressed by all stakeholders, especially school communities and youth um, formations. Then uh, the level of gun violence um, is still too high and all resources should be utilised to bring it down. We agree with the Minister that we really need to again visit that on the national level and to have a national discourse on gun ownership and confront the issue right on. Then violence in the society is too high and we believe that the respect for the rule of law should be cultivated at all levels, especially at school level, because it's not only the responsibility of the police, it's the responsibility of all. Um, then we also believe that the task team that's been announced by the Minister could play a vital role in ensuring that we format um, the approach um, and the response um, to the leadership challenges in the police correctly, and we believe that that can be a proactive resource going forward. Then finally, the Portfolio Committee wants to thank the thousands and thousands of honest police persons who every day do their utmost to uphold the law. We think they do an excellent job. We've seen that in the free state, hardworking people at all levels, and we must really applaud them for their hard work. Thank you very much. This meeting is closed.
I don't want to be here. <coughs> huh? I've been I've been talking the whole day. You know, I, I, it's not fair. We've been listening all day. No, but that's easy. You just sit and listen. I have got to do all of it. I've got to think. I've got to listen. I've got to speak. At the same time, it's not fair. <laughs> yeah. No, that's all right. <laughs> what did you say last year?
Good afternoon. Uh, Pretoria. Yeah, but I'm saying Pretoria. How many people are there? Hi, Mr. Zondi. Hello to you, ma'am. Um, yes, I have three journalists. Okay, thank you. I suggest that we start. Um, obviously, you've had the presentation. We don't have to go through the presentation again. Whoever was not there, tough luck. Sorry. Um, but we'll now just go straight to the to the questions. Um, we'll do it the usual way. Oh, I can see already the hands are up. We'll do it the usual way. We'll take a first group of five. Please ask one question per person, and then we'll come back again and do another round or so. I will start with Marina, of course, and... Okay, Marina, you, Karen, yourself and yourself. That's the first. You come to the second one. All right, thank you. Marina Lampracht for Media 24 Newspapers. Both to the Minister and General Piecha, it's the third year in a row that murder numbers have increased. Can you tell us what do you think is the reason for this and what exactly are you going to do about that? Abra Barbia, SABC News. Um, Diane Carlebarn had mentioned something about KZN having the highest murder rate, but I can't find that anywhere in the presentation. Which province has the highest incidence of murder, please? Karen Morn, ENCA. There's been a great emphasis from, from both the Minister and the Commissioner about the fact that there's been a decrease over a 10-year period. But the fact remains is there has been an increase significantly in contact crimes over the three years. And the fact that 49 South Africans are being murdered every single day, should there not be a greater cause for concern and, and anxiety? And should we not desist from fixating on a period that was 10 years ago? I mean, 10 years ago. Is that not something that is unhealthy? helpful? Should we not be striving for something better than 10 years ago and acknowledging if there is a problem? Thank you. Hi, Denise Williams from The Citizen. I wonder, I'm just wanting to get a little bit more detail on the figure given regarding child murderers. I think it was 49 as well, um, between the ages of 10 and 17. That was just in Gauteng, I think. But um, can we, I don't know if it's in the stats, but can we get sort of a little bit more information on that, please? Thanks. Mike Cohen from Bloomberg News. I just need a, a simple number, please. I didn't quite follow the discussion on the raw data in the committee. I'm just looking for the number on, on the murder rate per 100,000 people. 32.2 last year. What's the comparison for this year? Thanks. Hi, Bianca Capazorio from the Sunday Times. I um, have a question relating to the 600 and odd police officers who were arrested for, for criminal activity. Could you give me some more detail around those, uh, what has happened to them, where those cases are? And then related, um, a 2013 audit of yours uncovered 1,448 police officers with criminal records. What is happening with those police officers, please? Minister, yeah, National Commissioner. Um, no, no, thank you very much. <coughs> yeah, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I had thought that when we appeared before the Portfolio Committee, we clarified some of the issues. Uh, one of them specifically around the issue of murder in our society. Uh, that <coughs> In the, in the first instance, the question of, of murder in our society and violence in general is, is, is a particular feature and character of our society. In a sense, it is a social phenomenon that also has got to be tackled and be tackled quite direct, amongst other things. Now, 
and, and murder takes, takes place amongst acquaintances, amongst, amongst you know, within families, within social close knit kind of a, a for instance, just to make a yeah, close knit kind of a social setups and so on. Just make an example. Yourself as a journalist, you're not going to walk downtown here in Cape Town, and somebody will just walk up to you and murder you. It just doesn't happen that way. So, so <clears throat> and, and therefore, the, the question, question of dealing, dealing with murder in our society, you require, require a social effort and a social approach to actually deal with that. Because all, all what police can do and do is that the matter of a murder case or a murder incident having occurred somewhere gets then reported to the police, and the police will then react to a, a murder issue and, and then investigate, investigate accordingly and take, take the case for prosecution. prosecution. So, so it's, it's essentially, essentially post, a, post, post the incident, it's a post-facto post kind of a thing. So, so and, and I think we, we need to dissuade ourselves to think, to think that, that the, the, the reduction of the murder rate in our society is what police must do, and we have got nothing to do with it, because it's wrong to think that way. We have, we have got, got everything, everything to do with it. We, we raise our children, and, and we need to raise them in a particular way. Uh, <clears throat> we need to be able to to impact, uh, I think, constructively and positively in the manner in which we raise and govern matters of society, not to embrace a violent culture, uh, for an example. So, so <clears throat> it's, 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 it's a matter that requires effective, effective. And, and, and I think we have made this point also before the, 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 the portfolio committee that we require a, some, some degree of social mobilization, but also effective partnerships to begin to deal with this particular stage uh, amongst, the, amongst, the, amongst ourselves. Now, the... And, and I, I think, think the same, same goes, also goes, goes for issues of you know, the, the category of, of conduct crimes, uh, in a sense. Uh, you know, the, the same, same example like, you know, that we made uh, earlier on to then say, the fact, the fact that, that I disagree or may disagree with you does not mean that we need to settle the issue through violent means, for an example. And that's what, uh, as a pattern of social behavior amongst ourselves, as ordinary South Africans, we've got to, we've got to deal with. Um, <clears throat> should we mirror ourselves against the 10-year period? Uh, I'm, not I'm not sure what the suggested period is. In fact, we should mirror ourselves uh, against the 10 and the 5-year period. Uh, because essentially, whilst we're dealing with the inst in instances of criminality uh, in our society and the manner in which crime manifests itself, uh, it's, 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 it's quite essential uh, for us to be able to also track how much of progress are we making for an example in beginning to dampen and reducing the levels of crime uh, in our society. And therefore this longitudinal uh, view and take is, is quite necessary. We have a 10-year period, we have a five-year period, but we also have the, the, the yearly statistic, statistic in terms of what, what is then currently obtaining, obtaining uh, and so on, and how does that uh, <coughs> mirror against the, the past five years and the past you know, ten years and so on. So, so I think it's, a, <coughs> it's, it's an important measure. measure. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't think that uh, uh, Karen is suggesting that we should be mirroring ourselves against what a 20-year period or a two-year period. I don't know. I don't think that that's what you're suggesting. Uh, you need to have this uh, longitudinal sort of uh, view so that it can then inform you, uh, because it must also inform you how you are proceeding, how you are developing, and so forth. And now we are also informing the broader spectrum of reconstruction and development uh, in the country and so forth. Uh, you, were, you, you, you said you are interested in the police criminality. Uh, you, you want the specific cases. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Okay. Any specific. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll ask the commissioner, commissioner to deal with that, but, but also uh, the, the matter rate per hundred people. people is, is, is that a, a measure, measure or something? It, 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 it sounds like. Um, there, was there was the, the issue about child mothers as well, Denise. Denise. Uh, <coughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll ask, ask you to, 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 to deal with that. Minister, thank you very much. Let me also touch on the issue relating to matter increasing, matter decreasing. We have Could the National Police Commissioner please use her mic? Thank you. Oh, my apologies. Um, Matter increasing, matter decreasing. We have reported earlier on that uh, in 1314, our matter was sitting at 5%. As we report now, it's sitting at 4.6%. There is a marginal decrease. There is a marginal decrease in the in year, the, 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 the year that we're dealing with. And then um, the issue of which province has the highest MEDA rate. I just want to indicate that uh, in terms of the report that we are giving now, the percentage, uh, the, the province with the highest percentage change was counting with 346 MEDA charges. It was followed by Western Cape with 9.7% change with 282 meta charges. The next, the third one in that area is Limpopo with 6.7 percent with 49 charges. The fourth was KwaZulu Natal with 5.4 percent uh, increase uh, with 194 charges. And uh, I may also share with you that. Um, Although the Western Cape is the fourth highest contributor to the total number of charges recorded nationally at 17.9%, which is overall 3,186 charges, the ten top, the, of the 10 top stations that are contributing towards the highest meters, eight are from Western Cape. The highest recorded was Nyanga at 300, and then there are two KZN1s, Inanda and Umlazi, 179 and 170, followed by seven others from uh, the province of Western Cape, Guguletu, Delft, Mfuleni, um, Kaelicha, Harare, Cryfontein and Mitchell's Plain. Mitchell's Plain. So of the 10 top contributing stations, eight come from this province. So there are challenges uh, in terms of that. So I, I, I hope, I guess I've answered the one where you were saying. From, from Houghton, where Houghton was saying children aged between 10 and 17 committed 49 murders in terms of uh, the, 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 the murders that they reported. And children between 18 and 35 committed 884 murders, which is a worry for all of us. And hence the issue that we, issues that we were raising that we need to work, work together to push certain things with each other. There was an issue around ratios. The approach of SATS is to use raw data, but we give you formulas. The raw data is there. You can compute the ratios for yourself because the formula is standard for everybody. So when you have the formula, you can just uh, do the, 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 the formulation. Even in our published stats, you will find that we give you the formula for working out uh, the ratios.
or the, the issue of, of the minister, minister on, on you, hydrogen that I touched on it, 686 arrested police. police. Remember that, that as police, we, we focus on the internal, internal process. process. First, this 686 are no longer with us. They, they would be out of our system. system. They would have been fired. And, and uh, secondly, we, we also ensure that as a criminal process continues, because we make a differentiation between a criminal process as well as a disciplinary process. So the, our HR department will make sure that uh, the relevant discipline takes place. And the criminal process continues. You know, if I, if I may use uh, uh, some of the examples, you'll see that uh, whilst they are out, out of, of the system, system the, the criminal, criminal processes, processes continue in the courts. Okay, I'll take the next round. Um, there is no next round. Okay, we'll start. Chantal, uh, Karen. Uh, Chantal from the African News Agency. I just wanted to know the truck hijacking increase, it's quite high. Were you expecting this? And can we expect any more interventions? I know quite a few have been made this year already. Um, Karen Morn from ENCA. Minister, I fully appreciate the fact that, you know, there is a social argument to be made around murders, but is it not more useful for the police then to look at things like conviction rates? And for us to have a sense of where our criminal justice system is failing in securing the convictions of those responsible for unlawfully killing um, people. Because at the moment, as far as I understand, while the MPA may keep a record of the cases that it manages to take to court, the overall number of cases, there is no statistic that we have which shows what actually happens to those 1.7 million arrests that you were referencing. And perhaps that is a more fair way, fair way to analyze the functioning of our justice system. Is that something that you believe the police should consider in terms of effectively managing a process that they are indeed responsible, which is the detection and successful prosecution of crime? Thank you. Musa, there are questions in Pretoria. We're coming to Pretoria just now. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'm Minister Joseph Musia from SABC. Uh, just on the question of uh, police involvement in crime, it, it has, uh, have you considered maybe uh, changing the methods of recruitment uh, to, to ensure that you, 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 you have a stricter criteria for recruitment of police so that uh, we do not have as many numbers as we have? Uh, <coughs> thank, thank you very much. much. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm avoiding, avoiding to, to, get to get into something, something later, later, but even, even about this question, this question. Uh, because, because I think it's it's it's, 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 it's something, something that you should you should also at some, some point debate. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what it is that we need to debate, but it, it has got to be debated. The only thing I can say to you about it is, is that. <coughs> You, you can't, can't walk, walk into, into a church, church and expect to find a party. A church, a church produces a different product altogether, I think. Um, now, now <coughs> and, and therefore this question, question I mean, I agree, we, 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 the, the, the commission is going to, to also talk about one element of it, which is the question of what are we trying to do on our side to deal with the question of the recruitment and so forth. I think we... We, we, at some point, we spoke, spoke about the kind, kind of an approach that we were, that 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 we were advocating. But, but I'm saying, for, for me, the issue is even far broader than just an HR practice, practice in, in terms of, you know, attracting and the type of character of, of people that you are attracting to the services far beyond, beyond that. But that's a different debate altogether. Ms. Karen Mon, on the... On, 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 on this, this question, question again, again, I think, <coughs> and, and that's why I said, I think we need to dissuade ourselves of this tendency. Because even, 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 even for instance, the conviction rate itself, <coughs> excuse me, even the conviction rate, you make me cough, 
uh, even the conviction, conviction rate, rate, rate itself. Uh, it does not necessarily resolve the social problem, and that's and that's and that's my argument here. To then say, look, you, you yes have the conviction rate and so on, but the production point is society itself, and that's where your factory uh, production point, in a sense, is, and we need to deal with that. Um, now. The, the sense that I get is that, you know, we either we want to 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 make the issue of murder a police a, a police matter. If not, if it's not a police matter, it's a justice matter, and so forth in terms of uh, to the rate and the extent to which uh, we, we, <coughs> you know uh, people are convicted and so on. The the starting point in the first instance is. Why, in the first instance, should we have such incidences? Why do we have a violence as a feature of our social outlook as South Africans? Why do we have that? And that's the issue that, in itself, has got to be confronted uh, in the sense uh, head on by the South African society, not just you know police and justice in terms of uh, the issues of not really looking at the at the issue of the conviction rate and so forth. So I think it's it's a it's, it's a very serious matter that uh, has got to be uh, taken up from from that. Uh, but we can't simply absorb uh, absorb ourselves as ordinary members of society, also dealing with uh, the patterns of behaviour as well as the uh, patterns of violence as they manifest themselves uh, uh, within within uh, within uh, within our, our society. Um, yeah, so I think I think that's, that's those are the those are the two things I wanted to uh, to to, <clears throat> to to deal with, and I'm saying the other one in terms of the, the the police criminality, for an example, for me it's a matter that has got to be debated far beyond just the question of an HR two an instrument in in a, a, in a <clears throat> in drawing people into 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 a, what into the system. Um, but also we shouldn't behave as though we can predict uh, maybe this is where uh, currently we may be having a problem that perhaps into the future we may want to unpack a number of uh, a number of things even around uh, the issues of anomaly present use or around the issues of police criminality for an example. Um, no, you did say the 1.7 amongst other things, but also the police criminality kind of kind of issues. For instance, <clears throat> we shouldn't think that the 686 are people that were hired having criminal records. We shouldn't begin to. That's we, we can't even start there. You know, some of them were ordinarily like yourselves, ordinary people like yourselves, and so on. But you can't predict that if uh, you hire Chantel today into the police service, uh, Chantel will take a bribe. Uh, how do you do that? I mean, maybe some of our that can do that. Uh, but, <laughs> but certainly not an ordinary sort of HR practice. You know. uh, so it's possible. Or Denise uh, <coughs> would, uh, would come in clean as she is. Uh, who's Dennis? Yeah, she is. Uh, Dennis will come in and clean as she is and whatever, no criminal record, nothing, and so forth, and begin to work in the police service. But Dennis, at some point, uses the police car for her groceries, including her auntie's groceries, and things like that. I'm just making an example. You can't predict that. And yet, that would have been what? Like, violation and whatever, in some, in some other cases, perhaps. So I'm saying it's a. It's not as straightforward as we want to think of it, because it's not like you know the 686 people, the commissioner was just hired knowingly that they have a, what a criminal record or something. You know, it's, it's, it's so it's a it's a complex uh, kind of matter which also feeds into this vicious cycle that we have in society today. You know. A, so I'm, I'm, I'm saying, that's why I'm saying it's, it's a broader debate. You know, it's a broader debate. It's like yourself, you came in as an ordinary sort of journalist or whatever and so on, but 
There's no prediction that if I offer you 10,000 rents today, you will then write a story in a particular way. You know, there's, there's no time. You know, it's, a, it's difficult to predict that. You know, does that make you, does that make you a criminal and that you have a criminal background? I don't think so. It just means that you are caught in the cobweb of what society seems to be like in today's terms and so forth and begin to do some of these things. So it's a complex kind of So I'm saying, uh, yes, we, 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 we must have, from an, a human resources management perspective, must have tighter controls, tighter tools, and whatever. we can all continue to do that. Uh, but I'm also saying that it's a problem far beyond just that, because uh, the very same clean ones that you could also get in, uh, they could turn out to be something else. Uh, so as you to you then show that these the SABC man who comes in has got no criminal record. Of course, well, no criminal record, no disciplinary record anywhere else. Good track record while whites working for the SABC or something. But then you get caught up somehow. Uh, and then you begin to do some of this. So it's a, it's a, it's a complex kind of thing, I think. Uh, so it requires uh, quite a, a bigger debate than just that. You know, the other debate, the other debate, generally speaking, is <clears throat> no. Maybe let, let me just stay away from this one. Sorry. <laughs> let me just shut up. Thank you. The air conditioner. Hijacking. Hijacking was the. It's a track. Things which are which are up twenty nine point one percent. I missed your question. I'm just saying, uh, were you expecting the 29.1% and just what interventions are you putting in place? On track jacking, perhaps just to say to you, in 910, if I look at our roster data, in 2009, 2010, we had 1,412 uh, charges of that. If I look at this current year, 1415, we are having 1,279. We are still concerned about the level of uh, track checking. And indeed, we are working very, very hard on that one using also partnerships. You know, partnership policing comes in at hand here. We work, for instance, with the British American Tobacco because uh, they do a lot of their, 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 their delivery uh, approach is such that a lot of their trucks get hijacked in the townships in terms of, in terms of cigarettes. We work the, with the Consumer Goods uh, Council of SA because within their wing, beyond the retail malls, they're also looking at the logistics of trucks that bring groceries to the malls that are there. So we are also working with them, sharing intelligence, sharing uh, you know, uh, knowledge in order for us to look at whether we can improve uh, those uh, type of uh, aspects. We also use a lot of our own highway patrols, as well as working with structures such as Dinell with some of their new innovations that they are having, you know, the smelling capabilities of our canines and all the training more dogs to sniffer dogs to assist us with, 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 with uh, those type of issues. So track jacking remains a big issue, but it is also very, very closely intertwined with, uh, you know, the informal businesses because, you know, if you come to, to Western Cape, we realize that a lot of these uh, um, small businesses are sent uh, are, are into second-hand goods, so we must also heighten our second-hand goods policy because the cargo that is taken from the trucks is then sold to some of these uh, retailers and they sell it with and, you know, highly undercut price, prices. So it's those type of issues that we need to be looking into. We are looking at some of the innovations that we're seeing in some of the retailers where they are doing, you know, you can track through barcoding, you can get into a spaza shop barcode and actually tell that this product should not be here. It should be in Sweden because it should have been in box Y, in ship X, and it was destined for Sweden. So those are some of the things 
that we're looking into as we go forward to innovate in terms of uh, assisting ourselves to work with these uh, partners on, 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 on track checking. And then, um, the Minister, can I touch on the issue of uh, of uh, recruitment? But maybe let's yeah. just say, yeah. the other day when we were in Cabinet, the issue of uh, conviction rate, yeah. Minister Masuta was saying, perhaps there is a need at some point to present crime and conviction rates coming from the justice system to such, just that comparing the flow. That, that value chain mm -hmm. to see how it talks to each other. But those are some of the good ideas mm -hmm. that we've heard of that we need to look into mm -hmm. as we go forward. Um, the aspect of recruitment is a very crucial one and the minister has raised one side of the of the of the of, of, of the discussion. We have um, restructured, revamped our recruitment processes. And um, part of it is to start saying policing is a trust-based service delivery platform. So participation of the communities becomes very crucial to start saying, are these the people you want the community to be policed by? So the, the approach that we've adopted is that type of one. We would go into a community, we would feel you know, an arena, and we would talk about policing so that you start almost in advance with the community to start self-assessing to say, these ones cannot join us because you look at them, do you have a criminal record? If you have a criminal record, don't even try because you will be excluded. Do you have tattoos that are visible all over, not hidden? We would be saying, I, we don't think you are fitting the glove, you can't be with us. So those type of things we then talk to the community about and then they participate and we're able to then after that to start saying if you have passed all those generic issues and you've had the communities where they're saying we can set up a desk to talk to you and give you forms. Then we would go and do all the other things, physical testing, intellectual assessments and uh, all those assessments that we do, checking qualifications and stuff like that. But we've added, for instance, into that uh, some other batteries that we're using, what we call, you know, checking the DNA of policy. Are you really ready to be a police? And we have what we call a, a grooming camp. In that grooming camp, they sit with us for two, three weeks where we check ethics, we check patriotism, we check their passion, we check all those type of issues you know, the uh, code of values and that type of thing. And, uh, you know, same. so we are starting to see much, much more, much more better quality of the youth that are coming through into our training. So we believe that uh, recruitment is one of the contributors towards getting the right people around the job that we are doing over and above the many others that are there. So we're using that also as a mechanism of uh, recruiting the right people into the service. Uh, Pretoria. I'm Lee Stempen from Savona Safety and Security Magazine. Um, maybe my question should be to the National Commissioner. And you must forgive us, we didn't have the privilege to be at the briefing, so if some of the questions are repeat, please just bear with us. Um, the first thing I want to ask is, in terms of crime categories, why can't the police have more separate crime category categories, for example, under your uh, robberies with aggravating um, circumstances? We already have stuff like track jacking and car jacking and so on. But why can't there be stuff like shopping mall robberies specifically, and not only business robberies, or specific crime category like corruption, um, maybe under commercial crime? Um, I'm sure that's just a function that could be incorporated somewhere on the CAS system. I think it would just make, you know, for the public much more sense if we have more specific details in terms of that. Um, if I can also ask another question, please. Um, in terms of uh, specialised units, um, what are the plans to bring back specialised units, again, in terms of what we know uh, the success rate is of the family violence and uh, child protection units. So, like, with, in terms of drugs, in terms of gangs, and so on. 
And then my last question is with regard to cross-border crime, and I think it was a comment that the National Commissioner made earlier during the briefing, um, in terms of 13 countries whose nationals have contributed to crime. Um, I just want to know whether those involvement is specifically on a local level, or whether there's any information regarding the involvement in cross-border crime, specifically with regard to that 13 countries that, was, that were mentioned. Thank you. Is that it, Pretoria? Uh, yes, that is it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Oh, you want us to respond to the Commissioner? Okay, Go ahead. Let me start with the issue raising about uh, other subcategories. Sub Remember, for purposes of also comparison and uh, for people like States SA to assist us, we also follow international crime classification processes. And this is why we had a, a task team that was looking into our uh, crime states policy, because we need to also globally be able to be tracked and uh, report our crime in that fashion. However, I'm sure you know, the suggestion you're making to start looking at what other crimes are emerging that requires to be tracking. We note the issues that you are raising. I know that General Temeza, uh, for instance, in terms of some of the things that we're doing within the, you know, the criminal justice cluster, we have the ACTT environment where General Temeza is looking at uh, issues of uh, corruption in particular areas. And I'm sure we can look into those type of aspects to look at uh, matters relating to further corruption and, 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 and those areas. Shopping mall robberies, those are business crimes. They will be around there, but we could be able to further categorize to say within those crimes, which ones are shopping malls, which ones are just a spaza shop a, a business a crimes. So that can be done. And then I'm sure if we look into our data, we can zoom into those smaller ones. But those are also accommodated within those broader categories. And then um, the issues of uh, cross-border crimes, what I was reporting on there, I said, as I was reporting that we queried part of our business information data to look at uh, the issue of um, um, undocumented uh, 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 citizens and crimes committed by those uh, citizens, what those are. That's what we were reporting on. It wasn't around our, necessarily around what we do with SARCO, with Interpol and all those type of things, but Remember, we just cho we tracked something like 13 uh, countries. It's not all the countries. We tracked those that were having high, uh, significant numbers that uh, we shared today. So it's an area that is important because we see that as a driver, because if you are having undocumented uh, 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 people that commit crimes where we can't <coughs> check them. You know, we, I gave an example, for instance, of Fiela, to say some of the people that we were to deport, when we checked their figure, fing, fingerprints, we found that they are in the system, our criminal <coughs> system as wanted, or as people that have been to court and that still needs to go back. So those type of issues are very crucial in terms of how, how we manage a, uh, the crimes locally within the country. I don't know if there's anything that I've omitted in your in your questions. No, there isn't. Only the specialized units. Specialized units and cross border issues. We've done the cross border. Okay. In terms of specialized units, the minister has, you know, in, in terms of the question that he was answering in, in the portfolio committee, indicated that indeed, in terms of our legislation, were allowed to establish specialized units. And as and when it is necessary and we see pressure, we are able to do that. The FCS is one of those. The stock theft is one of those. Our special uh, crime unit in terms of uh, 
the work that General Temeza is doing is around those type of issues. And indeed, when there are certain crimes that require that we would be able to use specialized units to intervene in that regard, and the minister can at any time uh, request that we consider those type of units. And they do assist us. If I look at the stock theft, it's been very successful. If I look at the FCS, it's been very successful. We look at DPCI, it's very successful. So that is another approach. Task teams also assist, and it depends <coughs> also in the, in the intensity scope of the crime that you're dealing with. We also use task teams. We use, uh, for instance, the special uh, uh, platform that we've created, the National Intervention Unit, you know, we use those also to look at particular crime trends that are emerging. So the stats, the analysis assist us quite significantly to look at uh, intervention modalities that we can invoke to deal with those particular aspects. Okay, let's take the last round. Um, Wait. No, I won't start with you, Marina. I'll start no, 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 with no, 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 you. Time. And her and her and last, Marina. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister and Commissioner. My name is Chandra Zulban from the Institute for Security Studies. And I'm asking this question in capacity as editor of South African Crime Quarterly. I know that in your presentation, you emphasize the importance of understanding the extent of gender-based violence and responding to gender-based violence. Over the past few months, there have been numerous meetings of civil society organizations together with government departments, all concerned about the same thing, and talking specifically about the need for better data. Now, I'm just wondering why this year um, there's been no number given for the number of rapes committed in South Africa over the past financial year, and also not disaggregated by the province. Also, I'm just wondering whether it's at all possible to get the number of cases of domestic violence disaggregated from general assault. Now, I do notice that you have separated out sexual offenses um, detected as a result of police action from sexual offenses generally. But that doesn't answer the question of the number of rapes, please. Michelle Craig from DMCA. And Commissioner, you mentioned the figure of 60% of South Africans mm -hmm. have access to police stations within 30 minutes. Can you break down for us which areas make up that 60%, please? Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, did we understand you correctly as saying that media reporting on crime breeds more crime? Um, Minister, some of the most feared crimes, um, murder, house robbery and hijackings, have increased. Um, can you give us kind of an action plan of what the police are going to do in the coming year to make sure we don't see this again this year so that South Africans can really feel safe? Hmm? Okay. No, with regards to the last question, I think I responded to that question a number of times. Uh, on the question of, you know, the category of conduct crime. Um, so I've responded to that question. <coughs> uh, and, and of course we had a, a, of course an exchange or discussion or debate, even about that in the portfolio committee and even here, uh, about the, what it is that we need to understand first and foremost as a society around that, but also what it is that needs to be done around that. So I, I, I think I've, uh, I've, I've dealt with that. Um, the, I think the, the National Commissioner would, would probably deal with the question of classification. I think it's, it's, that's what you're referring to, classification of, of the, or categories of, the, of, the, of crime. So it, I think it's, uh, yeah, that's what it is uh, from uh, uh, Sean, I think she signed. Okay. 
Thank you, Minister. Let me start with the last one. We the statement, media reporting on crime breeds more crime. That's not actually what I'm saying. That's a double, uh, you know, there's a good double side of that coin. Media has a role to play in terms of bringing, you know, what shall I call it, crime prevention awareness. Because through the publications and the stories that go out there, there's also a very good crime uh, prevention crime awareness work that has been done by the media. Is if you would remember what I said when I mentioned the issue of media reporting, when I was reporting to the committee, I specifically use a concept copycatting. If you go out and report uh, certain things and you talk about, uh, you know, um, mall robberies, how people hit whatever. There are also lessons, you know, how to do it. You know, when you go to to, to, to some of these uh, internet processes, they'll tell you how to fix a car and how to do those. People also learn by doing that, and there's a lot of uh, copycatting that takes place. I do believe that uh, there are those two outcomes that come out of uh, reporting, but I really believe that uh, media has a had a, have, has a critical role to work with us, to assist us. When we talk about those partners whose hands should be on deck, media is also one of those to assist us, to ensure that uh, more awareness around uh, how to protect the communities to protect themselves, where to find help, how you can avoid crime, some of the hot spots that are there in terms of crime, media has a very critical role to play and there's a partnership that is unavoidable in that regard. Um, but there's also copycating, which we must look into to start saying, do we compromise certain things in the manner that we report because it may uh, accelerate interest in criminals to do particular things. You mentioned the issue of 60% access Remember, we acknowledge that that's the study that was done by uh, victims of crime survey, and I'm sure uh, uh, the executive manager from States SA, if you have interest, we can talk here so that we share where they will get, you know, what their basis was for that 60% uh, access, and uh, we can, you know, look at sharing that information with you. Okay. Um, the issue on gender-based violence and better data and no rapes. Remember what we, when we spoke about our approach and what we are reporting, we spoke about uh, those uh, five key uh, crime categories and 17 uh, subcategories sitting in four and four subcategories sitting in one, which is the ones of the police. There, there are many sub sub uh, indicators that are sitting there. If people are interested, for instance, like I mentioned uh, when I was the issues of rape, we are able to draw those and share those, and uh, I'm sure we can also assist if there is any special need for particular data, or you can also go into the raw data that we publish in terms of uh, um, the stats that we will be putting out, because if you go to our website, you'll be able to get the raw data, but we're always willing to share whatever information somebody may be looking for. But, uh, you know, that that international classification also guides us in terms of how we package the information that we share. You know, I, I made an example when we were in the meeting that, uh, for instance, cabinet would say, give us trio crimes. It's not a crime category, but they select particular crimes to say, show us how these crimes are behaving. So we're able to package that and give it to them. We can do that with any person who's looking for crimes that we're able to track. Thank you. Um, may I ask uh, the Minister of State for the National Commission and then the Deputy Minister and then the Minister just the closing remarks. Thank you. I just want to say indeed, you know, as we were reporting crime, the Minister has articulated it is a matter that requires all of us as, as, as citizens. We are the operatives as police out there to work. The communities are very crucial in assisting us 
to achieve crime. And I want to also encourage my colleagues, the many men and women in blue, that uh, our journey is a long one and it requires that we continue to work very hard and to ensure that we improve crime performance in the country. We thank them for how far they've gone this year, but there's much, much more that we can do. And I also want to thank our leadership, the minister, the deputy minister, and uh, the committee that we were at for giving us the enabling space to continue to work hard. Challenges are there, but we shall meet them with the necessary gusto and faith. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Director. Actually, I don't have anything to say. The minister will be closer. I just want to say to the media that um, as much as um, sometimes we find a lot of the media because of some of the articles that we get in the to crimes, but I think sometimes and most of the time they are doing a very good job. And um, but please don't do it too much. If it's seventy percent, it is seventy percent, not hundred percent. Police are not as bad as some of the media would say to us that the police are bad. Police are not. They are here to protect us. Each and every year we sit here doing the same thing, giving stats when it comes to criminal activities that are happening in the country. Thank you very much, Minister, after the music. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Director. No, no, there's, there's nothing real except to say you look beautiful, not as much as I do, but uh, you actually look beautiful. And thank you very much uh, for, <clears throat> for sharing today with us. Thank you. Yes.